top 40 records being played on every radio station in the United States is a communication to the children to take a trip, to cop out, to groove. This is like you know, check on the record album. This is a special question. We don't want you to smoke genetically modified ganja. Me? Sweet. Some call it marijuana. Sweet. Some call it sensory. Sweet. Some call it lamb's bread. The tea. And some people call it. Post out of done. <laughs> I'm Dave Jarnick. And we're live at the studio. Live. We're back. With no guests because they left. No, no we drinking. have guests. We have guests. They're have going guests. drinking. They don't drink. They're at a bar, two guys who don't drink. So these two guys rolled in, one Chinese guy and one fucking... Complete stoner. Complete stoner. Um, Sat down at the bar, did not drink, order any drinks, and uh, proceeded to wait on some... So what are you guys, a joke? It is, pretty much. It's, it's, it is a joke. It's the beginning of a joke, for beginning sure. Beginning of a joke. But they're going to come through and, and uh, make up for all that. <laughs> Maybe they will. Uh, we have Yin and or Jin, I should say. I it's Jin. I say Yin. You say Jin. It's Jin. I know, but you yeah, know, I always feel like there's there's more to it. I met him first. It's uh, Jin. He would have corrected me. I met him first. Yeah. No, nah, some people do. No, this. But he took me to Calix. To, you know, when they were, he was, he wanted Calix to. Some people though. Some people just they just roll with it. They're like, yeah, he calls me the wrong things for, right. for my entire life. Your black is much blacker than my black. Whoa, hey, dude. Don't even go like you that. Know? Don't even start. Your shirt. No, I want that color yeah, black You're shirt. faded. You're all faded. Yeah. yeah. This is really old. This yeah. from 2007. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Many washes. Oh, What's yeah. funny is that this is way older. This thing is from probably around 1999. So Look I'm, at them. They have no content. They're talking about their clothing. <laughs> this is a 25-year-old T-shirt. Perfectly clip crisp. Of course, I haven't worn it in 15 years because I picked it up when I was in Amsterdam, so... There you go. Oh, when of, you went through your storage unit? I was like, hey, old black flies. You didn't find any, like, pets that you left in a cage for a minute and said, I'm going to be back for you in a few days and no, come back and it's no, like a no, corpse. No, no random pets. No, no okay. random pets. Anybody have a lighter? Dude, don't be, come on. I don't have a lighter. I think this is. Some weed show or something? No, but I mean, Mark was very on top of it. He said, do you have everything you need before the show and starts? You, and, and you said yes and you lied. I don't think I answered. No, I think not. you answered incorrectly. So we also have Cassandra and Ben calling in later in the show from Sweetgrass. And I noticed that Vinny did what I did and was instantly went to Sweet Leaf, but I had to go back and correct myself on it because I kept kept putting that in because it just looked so right. But they're from Sweetgrass Dispensary out uh, in Lee, Mass, and they they won at the NECAN, last NECAN, mm. which is the uh, big convention up there in Boston. They won Dispensary of the Year. They were only open for two months when that happened, so that you know just showed how on point they were. Um, but they are focused on on hash, which of, of course we love, and they even have uh, like a viewing station at their spot, so you watch the people pressing uh, rosin. Should be at almost every spot. It was one of those, you know, you're you're f- figuring it out at the beginning. Of course, everything's not dialed in, and uh, yeah, it was. I think that was when we had the crazy storms and all that stuff too going down. So we were we were battling. Oh, I got a yo tip. Give me a yo tip. Um, so yeah, so Cassandra and Ben from Sweetgrass later in the show, and uh, might even have some more surprises. Who knows? You never know. Maybe we'll have a need for the OTIP XL. Maybe. That could we'll happen. roll a big fat joint. That could happen. So right now we are smoking some. What are we smoking? This is yours. This is the sour. Sour diesel. But a little later in the show, we will be giving props to Justin from Ozo, who grew this freak show out, which is fucking amazing. And this is the most pungent out out to, I I figured, I told him this, I'm like, it doesn't surprise me. You know coffee, you're going to know cannabis, right? Lockstep. So we're going to smoke some of this later. Maybe we'll use a a Yotip XL. Maybe, maybe. And I'm hearing great things about Germany. Um, Tons of people are heading over there right now. They're going to be opening up lounges. The whole community is busting. Um, We got to get gin out there bring some lamps because you know people are going to start buying lights right now and then they're going to go i don't you know 
I, I, I can't buy your good lights because I made a mistake and bought the shitty lights. Well, yeah, that's the problem. Everybody always ends up buying a, whatever's cheapest off of yeah. you know, Amazon or some bullshit. And, and I'm hearing the, the same type of bullshit come around again right now where people just convince themselves that since the technology all comes from China, it's all the same. Yeah. And I just, that, that's such bullshit. So well, luckily we're going to have Jin on and he's going to be able to straighten them out because, well, it's, it's very much like we've, we've had a year, we've had all the different uh, companies on here and it, it really does come down to like, you know, you can make it look like you can look at the light and see the light and it could be bright or whatever, but it's what the plants see. It's not, it's not what you're seeing. So having the correct drivers, the correct bulbs, the correct, it makes a huge difference. And, and, uh, yeah, like we'll, we'll be talking more about led obviously during the show, but just the ability now to fine tune everything compared to where before it was kind of like in the, we went through the blurple stages, right? Everything was blurple. Like, oh, you mean like, the heliospectra phase? Yeah, they're actually they're actually even a little later to the game. Like in the very beginning, it was like black dog, people like that were all doing those, and and really, you know, because it worked. It's not that it didn't work, but it was also like there was so much more of um, room to to grow there, literally, and so. We've filled in quite a lot, but there's still there's still more to go. You know what I mean? Like as things dial up, mm -hmm. and I remember I remember years ago when I was working at Sensi, and we were putting like when we sold lights there. I said this on the show I think last time, but the Dutch don't they don't even give you a plug. Like you, know, <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta wire the plug yourself. If you're gonna daisy chain them, you're gonna daisy chain them or whatever whatever thing. It's up to you. Um, so. Oh, no, I forgot what I, oh, so I was going to say, like, now it, when you take that, like, that time period, and then you, you fast forward to, like, I remember when I was selling those lights, I was saying, man, you know, one day weed will be legal, and, like, a place like Japan or something is going to go, like, wait a minute, we could do way better than this, because I figured, like, someone's going to look at this and go, like, you guys are doing this all wrong, which, not that we were, but <laughs> we kind of yeah, were. kind of were. Well, we were just throwing, like, massive amounts of heat and light at the plants which worked but you also had to like pull the light back so far from the plants that you created this whole like whole game that you had to play with yourself like how much it depends how much air conditioning you have like can you bring it right down onto the plant and people you know our whole way of growing changed too because everybody figured out that you know uh, it's not again it's not what you see it's what the plants are seeing and i think too early on 2010 when colorado was really coming into to its own, you know, when we had a law and regulation, uh, people needed such high ceilings to grow. They, they really didn't understand anything about the plant height, how high your lamp should be, how you dial them in. Um, I wonder with LEDs now and running them hotter too, how much of the game is being changed by people not adapting the inter internal temperature to accommodate for the change in lights? when it's such a simple fix? It's, well, the thing is it's easier, right? You need, you need, you need really what you gotta do is, you know, obviously gotta watch your VPD a lot more, um, which none of us even knew that it even existed five years ago, right? None of us were worried about VPD, but with LEDs, it makes more, it's much more important because your, your plants are either taking, you know, they're either uh, transpiring properly or they just sort of stop, you know? And then when they stop, it's like this, a lot of times they'll look healthy. So if you're not really on it and you're not seeing, uh, you know, you're not paying attention to your uh, environment, you might think, oh, they're doing fine, but they're really just sitting there kind of almost stagnant, you know? And whereas once you kick it, once you get the VPD correct, you'll, get, you'll start to drive uh, through the plant. So you think there's gonna come a time where you're gonna put a camera on your garden and an AI is going to watch it for it's you. Already, it's already happening. And tell you when you need to change. It's all, it's, uh, it's, all, it's all happening. Is it good? I, I don't. I mean, I wouldn't. I haven't uh, done it myself. But you like the same company. Those guys that were supposed to come on the show. It's exactly what they were doing. Which was, which was that whole um, Croptimus uh, setup from Croptimus Prime. Which was is Israeli tech directly linked to their th system which is all AI driven. And it was, you know, they, their claim was a single aphid would get into your grow, they would spot it, you know what I mean? Because AI is scanning, scanning, well, with cameras, scanning the whole thing. No, but I mean, would, would it next gen be where it's a laser attached to it and it'd be like Terminator? For sure. Well, you've seen the, you've seen the weed, you've seen the, um, the one that zaps the weeds, right? Did you see that one yet, Mark? 
Mark, well, there must be a basketball game on. Oh, no, he's not. I know. He's like, what? Weed? Huh? So there's the the weeding machines, which are basically just roll across the crops and have lasers that zap the, the weeds. Have you seen those yet? No. So, I mean, that's the same concept. I mean, obviously, if you can zap weeds, you can zap bugs, right? So... I, I'm, I'm all for it. Let's go. Let's it, do it. What was the company? I went to see them. Oh, I mean, I told you all about it. They were, uh, they grew, they made these like compartments, I want to say almost. Like they were stackable. Uh, they had lights on them in, inside. They had you grow medium and the shutters would come down so that you can regulate, you know, um, change the cycle, to, you know, uh, not relevant to the, to the, you know, the pod right next door. And they claimed they could dial in everything about how the lights would grow that specific strain. I'd like to know if Jin's doing stuff like that. If he is marketing his technology along with certain strains where he could give people, you know, I'm the... Sure, I'm sure all that down the road is, is doable, but it's, it's, again, you have to get through the runs. That's, was, we got Ben down. We got Ben hanging in there. What's going was, on? chatting with them Yo, a little bit before. What's up, guys? How you doing? Good, man. How are you guys? We are good. We're good. Oh, look, the whole, the whole crew's here. The crew. What's going on, Cassandra? Hey, how are you guys? It's been a long time, Adam. I know, right? <laughs> so how's, uh, how is the East what, Coast? When did you guys first meet? Uh, 1995, wow. 94. Yeah, probably like the year after, <laughs> the, the, sec, the, the year after we did the cup, I believe. So you came in with the... The next round probably yeah i met well i was i was there that year that you did the thing um the year you did the thing uh, she, you know. You know. <laughs> we have that on video I by the way there. well actually the other day i watched your your 30 year recap with annie which oh. put it in my mind to call her and um so you were like i was yeah, there I, I was there then i was there that year nice that was my first year that's awesome yeah, when you were talking about how crammed the PAX party house is, I got claustrophobic all over again. Yeah, it was crazy. It was one of those, like, we definitely outgrew that place on the first year. It was like, almost, you know, was like, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll never, forget, I'll never forget, like, squeezing past uh, Ja Levi and uh, Eddie I and all those guys in the narrow hallways trying to, like, the, ba the ladies' bathroom was the place to be, actually. There you go. Right? Well, it usually is, right? Isn't that usually the it case? It is. It is. Well, I usually get asked to leave. Bar. Yeah, Dave's usually like, "Oh shit, get out!" They found me. Understandably, yeah. hiding. In There's that, that sweet little corner bar um, that was jammed in by the bathrooms. There, that's where I met everybody: Todd McCormick and, and Hillary that year, and I think it was the Goddess year um, when Ina Megaskin and Mishka and all those ladies were. Right. Maybe that was. And the then Zoe. And then Zoe was. was body painting all those tricks and stuff right that exactly <laughs> it blurs together just ever so slowly wait well, wait but, hold on let's go back to body painting oh, was no, there was there year. meat involved <laughs> no there's no meat involved it wasn't one of those was it a dixie party where there no, was actually meat no no, no. no? no. this is okay. years, years ahead this all is right. green very, it was very polite a lot of fairy wings a lot of glitter yeah, I, I like fairy green, wings a lot of green green body paint and alex and allison gray were there because alex did the um goddess image yeah it was for the really, poster yeah yeah yeah, that was awesome. yeah, I believe so that. Yeah, it was that around that time. But boy, that was a very that was a great episode reminiscing about all that stuff and just the way Hager was and <laughs> um, right. Ben was five years old. Yeah. He just said um, mostly I was there working for Susan La Police, who you remember, right? She just passed. Yeah, she kids just, these uh, days. She just passed like a week ago or something, right? What? Mm. Susan La Police. Yeah, she just passed away like a week ago from a heart attack. Her son, no. her son posted. Yeah, her son posted a thing about it. it was yeah. Way to go, Adam. I, I thought you. Uh. Were, I, you know, Susan, oh, Susan was. I'm sorry. A I Susan I was. Found that out on camera. Well, wow. so, Susan was a trooper though. She was one of those. She actually had like three heart attacks already. So it was like her son. Her son was like, yeah, she's not making it through this one, unfortunately. Mm. But she was. Uh, she was a true. Like she was a proper hemster bringing she had all her gear she was yeah oh sorry to I'm sorry to have to bring it like that well, this is the okay. third time he's done this well, this figured, week by the way I'll, I'll think about that later I but I anyway she, to Annie yeah I was, I was working for her and she and annie as you know were like basically running the cup you know low-key behind the scenes yeah more than everybody else but anyway it was a very a very important time and that's when i met mila and then when she came to paris um i helped her demonstrate the those early pollinator, you know, her first bags and stuff at a 
a French, um, we did a, like a sort of mini cannabis cup thing in Paris. Um, and she came that's, and that's pretty ballsy back then too. Cause Hey, oh, Cassandra well, and Ben, are, are you guys because the French laws still suck, you know, are you guys using a microphone or anything like that? Do you have anything plugged into your computer? You can plug in and replug. We're getting a crackle in your audio. And I figured I, maybe we try to clear I it up something now. something on my end to make it better. It's oh, fine. Right. Don't worry about it. See, you don't there we go. You, you missed your fourth fine. wall over here. What, what do you mean? I was oh, trying to... Crack. Normally, we would let it go that way for three hours and crackle. then look in the, oh, no. in the thing later oh, and it'd be like, you know, just, great show, but man, that crackle throughout for the past three um, hours sucked. Boy, yeah, well, I, mean, I, was window. Window. I was just watching your episode with the uh, hashtag and uh, we won't have any problems as Terry did. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We yeah. can see you. Oh, that we need. Yeah, we don't worry. You will At never have. You will never have the problems Terry has. So I know he's watching too. He's like, ah, oh, you're a fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we didn't even know. I didn't notice that until I turned the show on afterwards. I'm like, what are they talking about? It. He looked fine when he was there, but no, it was just a big dark shadow. Well, there you go. Well, you guys always look fine. We can always see you. Oh well, thank you, thank so, you. Say that again. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you just said there. Oh. Mm. You guys look fine. So Ben, so Ben, where are you at? You're somewhere. You're at the lab or something, or no? Ben and I are uh, in the same room. That's Ben Handwork. Oh, that's Handwork. Okay, so I'm double Ben. So I have two Bens. Yeah, yeah, double Ben. So many uh, Bens. No, that's can't. why I was confused. I was like, wait a minute. I said hi, Ben, but then he didn't say nothing. So I figured it was Ben. And then I was like, wait a minute. That's Ben. All right. Well, Deadhead Ben. I'm on the other I love, side the, I love the hat, Ben. First off. That's Deadhead Ben with yeah. Cassandra because he's got a Skull and Roses shirt yeah, on. Yeah, and he's got a hood lamp uh, hat on. So, we so know he's, he's Hempy Ben. He's, yeah, buddy. Good job. There we Grass go. Roots. Although he is using, what is that? What are you smoking there? Is that wrapped? Is that a blunt? Oh, kids these days. That is, that is a blunt. Oh, Cassandra. You know, I know. What, do you, what do you do with these kids? Oh, they they kids. take great, do, great cannabis. To, like, I'm going to smoke a chill them, though, just for old time's sake. But, um, yeah, so that's Ben Handwerger, our dear friend, who's a grower and consultant kind of dude, and he's helping us throw dab Yeah, I, I remember. I saw you, you told me you were going to You guys know each other, yeah. We did. We chatted for a second. Can we pretend that nobody knows anything about dab and maybe give people the lowdown on how you judge the competition, how, you know, um, how the sampling is done? Um, we've judged so many competitions that we – tend to make fun of them usually right after I mean, we judged a competition where they gave us the samples in the packaging of the companies where it came from oh. okay All so right. yeah okay we we've ju we've judged where half of it came in glass and half came in plastic so you instantly disqualified everything in plastic because it what wasn't going to compare so um please you know just pretend we don't know anything and take us okay, through how I'm gonna, that I'm going to turn that over to Handwerger, but um, what I wanted to say first was one of the things I loved about that episode you guys did back in November was the thing about all the samples getting busted and the he who shall remain nameless and all the, you know, everybody being in cahoots. I just remember being at dear Susan's house um, with all the beautiful samples, which th those first years arrived in these incredible, I would love to replicate that, but they were in these incredibly beautiful, like suitcases mm -hmm. with little compartments. I don't know if you remember that, Adam, but they were gorgeous. I mean, if you got one of these judges kits, you really felt like a king um, or queen. Anyway, queen. so um, anyhow, we're not going to quite do that, but yeah, that was a very funny description of how fucked up all that those early, oh, yeah, early. There was, there was some, there was some moments there for sure. And the, well, the, the other thing too is that you know the, the the way that the Dutch do it all year long is nothing like they did during the cup, right? So that during the cup, everybody's trying to pull out every stop, right? And so because. Like, because it wasn't just normal for them, like the people that right. work in the shop, nobody, there was no, the flow was always a bit, a bit um, chunky, you know what I mean? Like, so, exactly. like, like and, and then if somebody did something and it worked, everybody copied them, you know what I mean? So like, that was, yeah. that was a classic because there was one year, and it might've been that same year you're talking about where I had all my weed in a briefcase with these little like magnifying things so people could see the weed. Yes. And, and then I gave yeah, all the judges. Nice and then stuff. Sensi rolls in right after and they're all dressed in their powder wigs and they've got oh, the, and they've got their boxes all set up. And then, Ar and then Arian yeah. rolls in and he's got his in I was like, oh God, everybody's trying to overdo the box thing now. Like, because you know, right. before everybody just dropped the weed off, you know what I mean? And then later. And they're like, I it's, forgot my outfit. It started, I wasn't it started to become more. Outfit. Of a, yeah, well, it started to become more of, of, of an event. 
event to when you drop your weed off, right? So, and then the well, year, the, you know, the Dabadoos always are, are at least in Barcelona, you know, I usually arrive like the morning of and end up like sitting on the floor in whatever social club with, you know, Mila's crew, like, and some toothpicks and tweezers, just like doling out little rice sized pieces of <laughs> ash onto pieces of tin foil and like screaming to get someone to bring us Sharpies so that we can blind mark the okay, samples. Because you brought it up, Cassandra. <laughs> yes. I, I, you know, it, he says it all the time. If it's in front of me, I'm going to talk about it. And you brought it up. Uh -oh. um, this is kind that of was the moment. one thing <laughs> when I hash. when I let some people know that we were going to, you know, head to the East Coast to, to yeah. participate in Dabadoo. They're like, oh, yeah, really? Are you going to get a worthy sample size? I'm like, I've never done a Dabadoo before, so I don't know. So is well, that this is a legitimate concern based on history? I suppose <laughs> that some people feel that you get, you know, a very what it always happens is, frankly, in defense of Dabadu and the women who run it, um, often people show up at the very last minute in Barcelona with their uh, yeah, barely, session, yeah, barely like enough. an hour before everybody shows up. Mm -hmm. So we're madly breaking it up into little pieces like with the last minute. And, um, and often people don't bring an adequate sample and whatever. So we are avoiding all of those problems here on the East Coast. And now I will let Hamburger tell you the totally deluxe way that the Massachusetts New England Dabba do. Oh, just before you go into it, just so you know, because we are so incapable of managing our own health and high, um, <laughs> the, the, the Colorado Department of Health and Human Services has yeah. come up with a recommended Dose, yes, get close, Cassandra. Ben, your eyes, you're wearing glasses. See that little squint, tiny, see that little squint. tiny dot on the top corner there? That's the suggested <laughs> serving size. You're, so you That's guys funny. are so you gram. Do it by a visual dot. Well, but each gram then is a hundred dabs. <laughs> I, I was joking as I left the pilot carry today. I was like, yeah, they're like, I, they're like, of course, I have to tell you about the booklet on your way out. You know, it's this booklet that tells you to only take a dab that size, you know. Like, oh, I wouldn't take anything above the course recommended not, your honor. size. It's so small, it's ridiculous. I'm but, you sure know, you chuckled heavily over that. No, what he said was, is, oh, look, that's the dab a sample size. That's oh, it's recommended oh, ouch. Oh, 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 zing. You know what I was just thinking, though? Zinger. Before before Ben tells us their technique, I have an idea. I have an idea. Uh oh. What if, because the biggest problem is that everybody thinks they want to smoke everything, right? But maybe, really, Realistically, you don't have to smoke everything. You have to smoke what oh. you need to smoke because we could we could tell you, hey, these are so if you had like fifty samples and you divided it into like or say forty eight samples and you went twelve, 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 mm -hmm. you could be in group A, group B, group C, group D, but you could get more hash to sample yeah. because you don't have to give as many people, you know what I mean? Because you're giving yeah. them, and then they then you would be more like able because the biggest problem I see when the small dab size is like, for instance, if you watch me do a dab, I will do probably four or five of the sample sizes at once just to kind of make it work you know what i mean because it's got to waste it to taste it, man that's part <laughs> of the deal <laughs> right and, and so i think but also the biggest problem is that a lot of times you smoke it once and you're in a group and you're doing it like one after another after another after another and there's a point where there's just no way that you could ever discern between the two on a high level you could do it on a taste Absolutely. level you could do it on an effect right. but nothing on a high but if you had enough that you really and, and you had it's also different it depends on how you do it if it's a one-day event or a two-day event but if it's a two-day event so for instance the idea would be like go through it and pick your top three or five or whatever now go and take those home take the rest home with you which you have because there's yeah. actually enough to do it and then smoke it somewhere else where you get a full of because that's the biggest thing like you could sometimes just smoke it and you'll be the best thing ever. And then you'll later you smoke it with somewhere else. And you're like, I don't know. I wasn't really fucking doing it all of a sudden. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Or the other way around where you're like, eh, eh. And then later you smoke it and you're like, holy fuck, dude. I did it in the sunlight outside where I was looking at it. And it was like, holy And God. I hadn't eaten or I had eaten or. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like testing something off a head of a joint. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, well, a joint's even worse because that's like, you know. It went part of the joint, right? If at the beginning of the joint doesn't really taste so much, but the end of the joint tastes really good, or the other way around, right? Yeah, that makes a huge difference to me too. Because sometimes, like a lot of the, a lot of weed now is kind of a more the front end of the joint weed instead of the back end. Like where I feel like I weed, weed back in the day was sort of like you smoked a couple of hits, you're like oh, okay, not. Then all of a sudden, it's like gets better and better and better, and it's like those yeah. are the, those are the ones that you. You know, you keep looking at the joint like, what the fuck? What happened? Yeah. Why is it getting better? You know, <laughs> exactly. That's when you know you're, you got a winner, right? So there's a lot to be said for the relight. 
All right, so Ben, yeah. take take the mic, Ben, because we've take, cut into all your time. Keep with our, <laughs> <laughs> we've stolen all but your no, ideas. He's gonna, he's gonna really tell you. Get ready. No, so I mean, I'm I'm glad you brought it up because we did get a lot of feedback from some great artists, and I I think much to kind of everybody's dismay initially, we we've kind of shaken it up a little for a traditional dabadoo. So I guess the the traditional dabadoo is more like. If we had 160 people and there's 16 grams entered, we'd give everybody a point one, right? But the the reality is the artist doesn't necessarily love their sample represented that way. Uh, a point one might not necessarily be big enough for some people, as you said. So what we looked at to kind of balance everything for the consumer, the artist, is essentially we're going to make sure, and I'll break it down in a minute, how your sample is going to be handled with the utmost integrity, first and foremost. Um, and then really secondarily, it's going to be broken out into 20 people's choice judges. They're going to be like hand selected, uh, ticket purchasers for a judge's kit. Those people will kind of be vetted and they're going to bring some value to the event as well. But at the end of the day, those 20 have no association to the hash maker. They have no association to any sort of sponsorship or affiliation. We're keeping it very blind, transparent. Which is um, a way we're not doing. It's right. We're not doing sponsorships necessarily. We're not doing full vendor tables like a traditional. Um, and, and it wasn't until a week or so ago that I, I got a better understanding of what traditional Dabadoo looked like, where what we did was break this out into, yes, point twos for the 20 people's choice. So essentially with 20 competitors for uh, rosin and melt or both, you're going to have a, a, a sample pack between four and eight grams in your judges kit but it's not going to be a a kit that you just get a box what we're going to do is portion out of baller jars i won't use any name brands uh currently but you'll see them at the event but we're going to portion into smaller jars for the point twos half grams for the judges panel and then leave the baller jar and what's going to happen is at 11 o'clock in the morning we're essentially going to start the session and it's going to be 10 to 15 minute intervals between each sample. Each sample will get pulled from fridge or freezer based on the artist's choice and it'll acclimate on the kitchen counter uh, for 30 minutes prior to being distributed as jar service for that sample time. So you guys at the judges table would be handed a full baller jar of sample number one. It goes across the judges panel and then that gets passed around the competitors where at the same time, the people's choice judges, kind of like at a, a restaurant where your card's green, mm -hmm. you, you set down the people's choice point two, they get to dab as much or as little, as many times or as few times as they want and take the sample home, use it for later. And not until we get to the 6 p.m. mark when all the judges' entries are in and everybody's done, we'll break the jars back out and give them back to the competitor and say, now everybody can talk. You guys can share, you can discuss what people thought, but we're going to make sure there's will have been cast. Yeah. But before, right. we're going to make sure there's no tainted eyes, ears or noses. Right. And it's going to be the probably cleanest portioning and sample distribution to date just because we got a lot of feedback about samples drying out. I know Spain gets very very hot and dry in yeah, some of these well, places and a point one gets I I'm not gets aired out pretty quick. I'm not talking about necessarily about Dabadoo because it wasn't Dabadoo, but we also were at another event. And it was sort of like, it was a hodgepodge, dude. They had everything in different things. It was like one was in a plastic bag, one was in a jar, one was in a giant jar, one was in a small jar. It was just fucking retarded. And it was like, it didn't make, didn't make it fair for whoever entered because you either were like lucky and got into this really nice little jam jar that looked really cool and made your shit look pop off really well, or you were in a ziploc bag you know what i mean and then that would be like i'd be mad if that was the case so that's cool and it's funny because you guys are doing similar to what we did with adsi which our whole thing was head to head because we didn't want to do categories our whole the, 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 for for what's adsi is the adam dunn show invitational which we're going to do another one in october oh, i believe oh. but then uh maybe our, in thailand so the idea was uh you know People bring their product. It's on site, just like you're doing. Like it's 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 hand, it's brought out to the table, two at a time, and everybody has their tables. They kind of like set up like a wedding, and you basically 
you have your jar, and if you leave, whatever jar you leave standing up is the winner. Whatever jar you flip upside down is oh, the loser. And you yeah. guys all kind of work as a group together. So they do like, that at wine tastings, that tradition of, of flipping the glass. Yeah. yeah, and it makes it just easier because then the person yeah. who's serving comes up, grabs all those the things, puts those aside, grabs the winner, puts yeah. those into the winner category. And the, I, the key was because we were doing multiple rounds of head to head, you had to mm -hmm. you had to give quite a bit not you know like a couple like a couple ounces of weed it was like it didn't work like one ounce wasn't enough because if you were if you're going to go four or five rounds in and you have seven people to satisfy at each round you kind of want it you know make sure that there was enough so that was the whole thing is getting people to to that's get, an important point out of that whole thing yeah is, it, as it goes because it gets make you know it's worse when you're because it also was like if you're if you've smoked the same weed four or five times yeah. Then you're kind of like if you're if you're on it, you're going to be like, oh, that's that, you know. What I mean, if it's that unique, yeah. whereas if it's, you know, it, but it does, you do start to see how like weed that was fire because it just got to that end was like it made it right to the end, but then at the end it was it looked like crap and it was like it, it, the smell wasn't popping enough, and so you saw them lose at the end. So anyway, but yeah, very similar. Yeah, is always and, that's sort of just just to comment on what you just said. The truth is it's an absurd concept always to try to judge weed in a short amount of time and yeah. not to always yeah. harken back to these beautiful old days in Amsterdam. But I have to say, we had that fucking suitcase for a week. Yeah. 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 We no, had that suitcase yeah. for like seven days. We're at Susan's apartment, Mishka, Tigran, my friend Eric, who's also passed away, all these people who were there. And I was the secretary and we took our bloody time and we went out to eat and we came back and we well, that's walked. The key. And that's the key is working as a group makes it a lot easier yeah. to but really to really come to like better conclusions because if you're by yourself you tend to also you know you're, you're way too fixated on what you like and you might not see the bigger picture and so you're with yeah. a group when you're with it's a group chat with other people oh it's much mixed away it makes it a lot less pressure too because what happens is yeah. you, you you tend to like Blaze. The influence you, a lot, though, well you too. go through it too fast if you do it by yourself you're just like ah well the, the, I'll pick, i'm not even gonna yeah. waste my time with these ones and it's like yeah how many times have you got weed that you thought looked like shit and then all of a sudden you were like pinned to the fucking couch like holy yeah. shit dude that was what was that you know what i mean it, it happens a yeah. lot so i'd like to see uh, the judging change a little bit oh. i i'd like it to be more like wine tasting where the effect mm -hmm. is completely removed from the equation. No one is judging mm -hmm. on how, how it's drunk you got in wine. I would love that. I agree, yeah, I agree. would all be like, yay! Let's take effect <laughs> out and, yeah, and, and change it to maybe experience, right? Yeah. How well did it dab? Or, you know, or do a separate category how, later when you've broken it down to the final three. How do you think it would be like, interesting? Let, because it's hard when you... The whole problem is if you have 20 kinds of weed, you're obviously getting little bits off of each and by a certain point you're you're full you know what i mean that's just kind of like when you're doing dabs how if you, like, you smoke the same dab over and over again don't really get that high you kind of just go up and down up and down up and down but then the minute you try like three or four you're like passed out on the couch and you woke up like oh what the fuck happened yeah. there? you know it's like it just no we, out. we just judged a competition and it there was just there were too many samples uh, i enjoyed it okay and and i can appreciate what you guys had to go through being in another country putting everything together people dropping off sample you can't have some rigorous 5 p.m if i don't get it by this date that's it you're out because then be they all show up and, you know but i right. gave everybody five <laughs> in effect that was i did i didn't even it was there was no there was no way we were we sat there for two and a half hours smoking flour and then yeah. and that we then we had to get to the concentrates so there was Ooh. no point in in for even it. judging effect so I think we should just take that out and come to, uh, you know, almost have a round table of people who are experienced in judging these competitions. And yes, Max Montrose, you should be one of them wherever you are. Um, and come up with like some standards, you know, oh, like you're cannabis standards. Oh, you're a Gangier now. Now you're a Gangier. No, it doesn't have to be a Gangier. Like you a no. said Gangier. I, I did not. Those are the guys that we were at the Tulsa. And uh, the, she went a little little fakakta on stage insulting Everybody, all the growers and yeah you don't want to do that that was <laughs> i didn't know she was going to do that when we were talking beforehand and i was just ranting i didn't know she was going to get up on stage afterwards and, and everything say that you shit. said and, and get everyone so, mad. Oh God, no Dave. i it was just i was speaking my mind i always speak my mind i didn't know who she was you know <laughs> so and, how many and, and dave to your point we're we're talking to some very heady artists consumers about different nuances where 
I, I reached out to a few. I, like I said, I would love if Max would chime in at some point. Um, I talked to a couple others that have pretty comprehensive scoring cards. We're going to try to come up with something that, like this Dabadoo, is, is also a little different and unique. I agree wholeheartedly. We're not going to do effects. We've got up to potentially 40 samples. And keeping the competitors limited to 20 only, either you're doing rosin, melt, or both, we've got between 20 and 40 samples total, max. That's it. it it's, it's doable for a day. Mm -hmm. But unless you're going to give me 30 days to judge 30 samples based on effect, and that's my one first smoke for the day, it's not a realistic category to be judging. So I think for here, a lot of the, the nuances come down to kind of like how does the smell transition to the flavor as opposed to how high did it get me? Because by the 20th sample of rosin, you don't know. Then we're getting into melt. Well, then that would lead into my next question. Do you have uniformity of rig so that everybody so that's is sampling? The, that's the other nuance. A lot of people are like, I really would prefer to see my sample dabbed on courts where other people are going to have a proxy or a Puffco or a, a Carta or whatever they have, an e-rig. There's yeah, nuances to each device where each device is going to provide a different experience as well. And that's and really hard to control. Tobacco. Sorry. Actually, well, well, this well, was... That, that was the other, the other big thing is when the samples all dried out in Spain, everybody just ended up crumbling it into spliffs. Ugh. That's not how they want to see it represented either. <laughs> That's even worse. We're right? walking. If yes. anybody starts uh, doing that, we're leaving. I'm just... Uh, you know, you're I, not gonna walk because it's gonna be Mila, baby. Uh, yeah, Mila's, again, Mila's here, like, stoked, we're not, Mila's we're not gonna allow She's like, yeah. Oh, it all dried out. I, Mila took a, a dab can... off of this in Barcelona. She so, likes, yeah, she likes equipment, but she's yeah. a split smoker, like oh, a yeah. good bitch woman. What is that you guys have? Oh, oh well, glad it, you asked. Yeah, that's why I just plug away. <laughs> what is away. So, th this is a Dab X Go. One of our sponsors. So, um, I've known like I've known Christian Rado, who founded the company for, oh, it's like 12, 13 years now. He started a small company called Vaporous to make um, the uh, carts. the vapor carts without heavy metals because his dad had, um, he needed to smoke, he needed to vape, and he didn't want his dad to get any sicker. So you roll yeah. the tape forward after he was a race car driver, designer, and engineer. Um, he came up with this device. It It is wholly different than the Carta and the Puffcos that are based off of a banger style dab where all the reclaim gathers underneath the glass and yeah. it goops out everywhere. Um, if you load an Adam Dunn hit for someone and they only take a little, you know, hit <laughs> off of it, it's swagged because it was in the banger and now it's mixed with reclaim and it's converted to CBN. So you have to clean it out and you, you're going through, you know, a thousand Q-tips. This yeah. uses uh, a ceramic heating um, disc, I guess, in the atomizer and it melts your concentrate down the edge of the atomizer so that when it vaporizes, the reclaim and the vapor never share the same path. So you can load it full and pass it around in sesh mode and you can, you know, get four to eight hits off of it before you're loading it again. Whereas if you had any of the other style electronic rigs, you'd have to you have clean eight, it. You have eight Q-tips on your counter <laughs> and, <laughs> and you've taken way much, way more time to do it. And the cool part is, is at the end, okay, so then it pops down into this little, uh, is a little like uh, silicone tray, right? So there's a silicone tray. You can see the, yep. you see the reclaim at the bottom. So all the reclaim ends up there and you just take that silicone tray, throw it in your freezer and then pop out the little square and then you got your, and then you put it, put it in, put that in a parchment paper and the, like, when you look at the reclaim coming out of this, it looks just, if you're putting in really good product, it comes out. It looks, looks like the, the shatter we smoked eight years ago. Yeah, it looks like Okay, it looks the same yeah. quality as the shatter. It comes out like distillate almost. Yeah. It has that distillate quality where it's just like see-through. You want to keep it. You don't know what you're going to use it for, whether or not you make sleeping edibles, pills. It's, 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 yeah. Pay the brand one well, more time for us. Yeah. And, and is, is there an Adam Dunn show discount? Of course. Yeah, so, 
<laughs> it's three. Because folks, we own a dispensary, and we're looking for cool products. Well, so it's you, 300 yeah, bucks yeah, off of their website. Yeah. If you enter done deal, it's 20% off, so it's 240 But we'll link you up for sure. for. Uh, but we should show. discuss whether or not that we, we, we talked about this off the air, about how it, it's an amazing rig. Love it for what it does, but possibly sampling 10 individual samples it's probably not the best device amen because it's the way it's the way it 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 atomizes right it's constantly taking a little off the bottom and running right. it through so to get it so completely clean so that you would you just need to run a bunch through that one, that one, so that one rips but what you, you could do is you could have a whole bunch of time one rig or you would have a rig for each strain so yeah. that you're not changing the strain or you would change you know the atomizer yeah. top 40 of these no, you, you know, what <laughs> you can do is it's it's doable well, you could take the atomizers off and deliver a new atomizer and then you can just drop these right into alcohol soak them out okay. clean them up have them yep. all fresh and just keep rotating the atomizers and then you could bring a fresh you could bring a fresh unit each time with a fresh thing, bam, on the table. Everyone has their yeah. has their piece, and you just bring the fresh. I think that's a great idea. There's a solution to this, whether or not you're just pulling the whole stem out and putting yeah. a new stem in, so, so not even unscrewing anything. It's all magnetic, so this, the stem oh. pops. So uh -huh. that pops out like that. So you could literally just have a dunk tank and just be dunking them, take the next one, fresh and mm -hmm. clean ones. You can run them out. You just take it out, take it out of the alcohol. Okay. You run it underwater, and then you just dry it off. Boom, you're good to go. I heard there's something in the works for it. They're coming out yes. with a banger style so that if we did want to use it in competition and go Q-tip style, Ooh. we could we could do that. <laughs> against against right. every, but it, every cell in my body. You know, it, <laughs> I, I agree with what you're saying, but they're practicing an age-old lesson from retail is you give the customer what they want. And, yes. if, and if they want that, deliver it to them. Get it. Okay, so that's what they're going to make. So maybe there's a discussion here to figure out how something like that could work. I mean, it would. You know what, it doesn't have to be this. But it, is, is what a bunch of engineering nerds we all are. Like how much time Podheads spend talking about building things, improving things, nuances of functionality. It's it's a lot. You so, know, they think we're all like dancing through meadows of daffodils and <laughs> making bird sounds, and that's not really what's going on yeah, a lot of the time. Definitely doing bird sounds as much as I can. In his, in his I garden. Heard <laughs> <laughs> well, hook -haw, hook -haw, you know, but Tookie, like Tookie. it's not. Our, but yeah, it's oh, a, look at, so I think you should look at everybody gets ben. Really, What's he got? I love he's, he video. looks like Ben's in the cult. Oh, he's part of the cult. Yeah. Ben, you're part oh, of the puff cult? No. It was given. This was a gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they all say. Yeah. They all say. Is that, is that the one you won? This is the Emerald Cup one, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's okay. the one he won. Oh, because it won if you won it, it's all right. Okay, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, he doesn't get a pass for that. He, he didn't, you know. So, Ben. But it's so, a cool rig, i got to say. It works every time. I mean. So, Hash Ben. I think <laughs> I'll call him Hash Ben. He's Hash Ben. A little more annoying <laughs> stuff to tell you about the details of the way we're going to. Hamburger, just just hit him with a lot. I just want to interject that people will be fed during this process because oh, yeah. it does sound like a six hour binge of well, dabaroni. Well, what, what kind of food are we talking but about? Oh, yeah, I'm talking look at, about, look at I Dave. have a wood fired pizza oven that makes very good pizza. We're gonna be making pizza. All my old catering crew is gonna come help me. And there are gonna be meals like my cousin who has a great bagel company in Rhode Island is bringing oh, bagels. You just spoke his magic words. Hard stop, hard stop. Just, look at, look at, I heard you say focaccia. I'm just telling you, these did are very, you, very good bagels from the Lieberman family. I will okay? be the judge. Oh my God. He's already there just bagels. judging bagels. He doesn't even care about the weed I'm, anymore. I, like, I'm heading right to Utopia bagels. bagels. No. I'm telling you, don't bother going to Utopia. Just come to okay. Dabadoo. All right. I'm there. You yeah. are coming. You're judging. This is a done deal. You're already RSVP'd, it's, honey. It's officially a done deal. And it's officially gas. a done deal. So, yeah, with food, it's really, it's it's good to have. Um, Wait, hold on. What did he just say there? Gas money, too? Hold oh, on. Oh, yeah. It's a gas. plug. But it's, it is, it's always important to have, like, refreshing shit that's, like, easy and small because people get so sidetracked. The minute you start overdoing it, they're like, 
half-eaten shit everywhere and everybody's all like so it's always nice when you have just keep it kind of rotating and if you have people that are serving already it's nice because you just do like in between each one you drop something down everybody gets a little uh, you know something something to kind of neutralize that flavor in their mouth and and, 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 yeah and then at the end do the big uh fucking you know up and smoke fucking munch out fast at the end with pizzas because you Pizzas, Bagels. you don't want to do pizzas too early. I mean, that's definitely way down the line. Otherwise. They're very <laughs> light, Mr. Don. I gotta tell you, they're nice, very nice organic crust pizzas. They're good. They don't they don't go down too heavy. They're, but light, they're light until they're Dave's had six of them, and then he's like, oh, the sixth one got me. <laughs> <laughs> My kid just went to New York last week to uh, sing at Carnegie Hall with her class, and oh. I had Amore deliver three pies to LaGuardia Airport, and they ate them right before they got on the plane. Now so, that's, so that's I like my hope. pizza. I like my pizza. I'm, uh, they didn't bring you any of that? Uh, well, no, she did. She brought me back four slices. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. You were like, where's my slice? Yeah. No, no. It was, I had to, he didn't do it for the, nothing. He didn't do it for nothing. That was the bribe. Yeah, I know. I was going to say. There's no way you just let them. You didn't just send them. You, no. You were like, and the four of them are for me. And it was good five <laughs> hours. No, no. I had them do it separate. You know, yeah. they cooled off a few people. Anyway. Yes. Dabadoo, oh, May 18th and 19th. Uh, really the 18th, 18th, 19th. Um, really the 18th? I mean, you already know that people can survive a Dabadoo by just eating the tiniest sliver of kind of like greasy room temperature Serrano ham. Because that's what happens all during Spanibus and all during Dabadoo is you're like sort of oh. really hungry and oh. you're in some neighborhood where there's no food yeah. and there's just a guy cutting Serrano ham. So you're like at and the meat sweats so around day. 3 in the morning that's you're all eat nothing but exactly. ham and yeah. dabs. I like that. Yeah. Embarical. Dabs and ham. Is, is, <laughs> so it won't be dabs and ham. There'll be, there'll be some snacks. And okay, so we wanted to just conclude the the way the sampling happens. Yeah, and then awesome. there's some celebrity judges, including these kind gentlemen before you. So, so, so C-list. So C-list celebrities. Well, B for you, C for me, but you know, okay. Keep some people will be eating bagels and not paying attention, but nonetheless... Uh. Okay, so Handwerker, is there something else? Is there some other important... I, I like to call them industry professionals or industry That's panel true. rather than just celebrity, which just seems to be frowned upon for whatever reason. But, it's silly. Uh, no, the, the only other thing is like the, the typical thing we see missed in most of these category entries is people are allowed to generally, for whatever reason, enter two or three different rosins in rosin category. No stacking here. If you enter one rosin, it's your best jar. If you enter one melt, it's your best melt. But you can't have five entries when somebody else just put up one jar. So we're, but, we're but trying to keep a very level playing field. But you can do different categories. I like it. Yep, you can do rosin and melt. You can do both, but you can't do two rosins or two melts. Gotcha. That makes sense. And what is the submission quantity? 21 grams. 21 grams. Nice. Yep. And, are you and again, it's 20, it's 20 competitors. The list is almost full of completely New England based or like a couple New Yorker, uh, one Northern Virginia, but all Northeast single source right now, which is pretty impressive. That's awesome. And also just, I want to say, even though maybe some people won't like this, but if someone can't come up with 21 grams, please still get in touch with us because some home makers, home hash makers, um, 21 grams is, is massive. Yep. So if you don't have quite that much, don't be discouraged. Um, please still get in touch with us. We're still, we're st- there might be a way to figure it out. Absolutely. Yeah, and you do a smaller, you just do a smaller judging category with a group yeah, of people, something. group, group them together. So. That's a lot to ask of someone who's just making it with their own garden, you know. Um, well, that was so always, it, that was always the thing when you were doing an entry, it was like, Fuck, now they're gonna get all my good like the all my yeah. good shit like ah, I better I fucking have. and you know it's like you just ro- you're rolling the dice at that point but it is it is nice to get the feedback too because you know it's like it it can hurt <laughs> but it can also be really rewarding too where you're like fuck all right well even if I didn't because there's been so many years where we didn't win shit entered we knew we fucking had fire. And when you saw the, what really won, you know, classic case of like, what the fuck, da, 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 those guys, you know, but whatever. But at the end of the day, just the feedback I'd get off the other judges, they'd be like, dude, we voted for you. Or I don't know what happened. Like, I had so many times where it'd be like, I don't really know what happened here. It was kind of weird. But like, you know, everybody seems to have voted for us, but we didn't win. But, you know, that's, that's just the classic, especially Cannabis Cup, because that was like the 
mini it was like mini america every time it happened like like we were over there in europe and all of a sudden all these americans would roll in and it was get super political where we nobody cared during the rest of the year but all of a sudden now it's dom kring versus fucking barney's versus our versus greenhouse versus this one everyone's in their little camps everyone's like trying to like all of a sudden any american that flew into town He'd be like, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, nothing. And then you'd find out, oh, they were bringing weed for a <laughs> fuckhead over here. Oh. And, then, and then, you know, it, none of the weed was from Amsterdam. It was all brought in from different places. So it was zero representation of what was really happening there. So, like, if you came in, so I was always saying they should do a cup. It takes a whole year in Amsterdam or anywhere now. Take a whole year to do it. You can drop in whenever the fuck you want. We you start January first and you announce it on December thirty first, and basically it's, it's, to it's college. that way you you can't catch people like r- real, not just like that one week when they have good weed. You know what I mean? That one week, oh look at this, this weed's great, and then you go in on a a month later and it's like all oh, shit. You know what I mean? And that's what happened in Amsterdam is people would leave town, and then the weed would slowly get worse and worse because they run out of the weed that they all had for the cup, and now they're just replacing it with whatever they had. You know what I mean? And so I was like be good to catch people off guard because then you get guys like yourselves who take you know pride in what you're doing you're going to win every time because people are going to roll in and, and you're always going to treat them good whereas you go into another place and it's like during that cup week they're all super nice giving out free bags to everybody it's like <laughs> who got the best goodie bag that's all they really cared about like so like, people came over to the cup and barney's started to just give people ridiculous amounts of stuff so people got oh, dude i got seeds a hoodie a thing a big, i'm voting like, for them i was like that has nothing to do with weed dude like what are you talking about uh, like ah so i got real- there's also like there's so much differentiation to batch to batch like i go to growers and they got the fall harvest is better than the winter harvest or so and it's also so much preference so it's a lot of these things are like who's best today like who's got it right now and then doing that consistently is one thing because you're right like sometimes one thing wins in a cup you're like what the fuck is that um you know but it's a lot of preference too i think like there's like hot flavors right now that's like if you don't have this, if you don't have a Z turf on hash, then you know it's, you're not you're not you have no chance. <laughs> so you and told we you. we learned about Dabadoo. Tell us a little bit about Sweetgrass Botanicals. Um. Well, long, long, long slog to get here. Um. But we've been open two months, and we just won best dispensary in Massachusetts, which was like a crazy, unexpected thrill. Um, because we'd only been open seven weeks, um, and there was, you know, a lot of serious competition in established, you know, places. So that was really exciting. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think the last time I talked to Adam about this was maybe at the beginning of this. So I, I, we, we lost a couple of years to COVID. It was a very long process, but we bought a really cool place in Lee, Massachusetts on Laurel Lake, which is like right in the heart of that Berkshires area with Tanglewood and Jacob's Pillow and the Mount and Kripalu Yoga Institute, all this stuff is right there near us. And we got a place, it was an old restaurant, a very beloved restaurant in that area. Everybody would stop there on their way to Tanglewood or whatever. And I got a kitchen because I'm a chef and um, looking for a place to do edibles. You know, I didn't really want to have to start fresh with a commercial kitchen. So it's this crazy place with this huge lake view and it's, you know, many thousands of square feet. And we made a solventless uh, extraction lab where Ben is working and I have a commercial kitchen. And we have this massive mercantile room that isn't cannabis. It's all glass, it's all hemp stuff. Um, you know, for me, like, one of the big inspirations for the store is, uh, Adam, you remember that place, Shamanica Botanica that John Levi opened? Yeah. For sure. Very briefly. Mm-hmm. That was, um, this is like a. That was down by the, by the, by the, what was the name of that coffee shop down there? That, that little cool yeah. little coffee shop that was across the street from his spot. Ben's. Right. Um, well, it was sort of like an herbal apothecary yeah. and it was definitely a smoke shop, but he was a traveler and he was a Rasta and he had a lot of cool stuff. He had stuff from India. He knew quite a bit about herbalism and so there'd be like bulk herbs and smudge sticks and interesting stuff but they were weed people and so you know it's not amsterdam and it's not california it's massachusetts so it's a little pilgrim style the rules around here are you you vertically integrated no we're not we have a co-located manufacturing license and a recreational uh sorry a retail license so we have a retail and a manufacturing co-located in the same crazy rambly building this weird berkshire's restaurant thing 
God. So we have, you know, big glass windows overlooking the lake and we have big glass windows, <laughs> Ben's wildest nightmare, into his lab space. So one of the great exciting things about the place for me and for the public is that you can, uh, it's the only place on the East Coast where the public can witness solventless hash making through some demonstration windows, like at the brewery or at the cheese factory or the whatever, you know? So in our man, in our man trap where you present your ID in that room, there's, uh, you can look into our hashtag um, solventless extraction lab with all the big equipment and, and we'll be pressing in front of those windows. Ben will be pressing. <laughs> and so you just, you buy off the wholesale market and, and then you, yes. just, you process it locally. Yeah, we find material all over Mass. Uh, we try to partner with like, you know, well-known grows that we like. Like there's a couple brands out here we're working with uh, doing collaborations because we don't grow. We're just, I mean, our whole life is collaborations and uh, working with different growers. Well, we're, and because we're, we had all these years getting this place open, we spent these past three years um, visiting grows, which a lot of people don't bother to do. We had all the time in the world. So we visited repeatedly the same grow over and over, built relationships, saw the way the operation was going. So we have some longstanding relationships with some people um, and who are interested in opening, you know, who are open to genetics and discussions about what we're looking for and stuff. So it makes it much more interesting. When you And they gave out a lot of licenses in Massachusetts too, right? A lot of, I mean, there's yeah, there's a lot to choose from. And it's, I mean, no because I come from, <clears throat> say it's sort of like opening a restaurant, but you have to sell food from Costco. You know, it's this feeling of like, you're opening a dispensary, but you don't have control over the production of the, of the product. But I don't feel that way anymore because now I've met so many kindred people in the growing world. And there's um, no real Costco that you're going to buy from anyway. Yeah, I don't feel like it's Costco <laughs> anymore. I feel like, oh, I opened a restaurant, but I have to buy all the food from the really cool, organic, biodynamic farm where I really like the people and we hang out all the time. Well, like, doing, oh, no. They're just starting, <laughs> they're just starting to come online. The, the, yeah. Like, We're finding some weed cool in people to work. And there's a lot of like old school growers getting on, like, yeah. online now that were behind the MSOs who were all just growing mm -hmm. a ton of fucking garbage weed. Right. So um, that's a different the, market, like the market's starting to change. There's that. There's yeah. solventless coming out. There's really interesting other products surrounded, like around the solventless and, and using that, whether it's an edible or something. Um, it's it's interesting that you go, you're, you know, you're going solventless because our next guest coming on is from Sunscape LED, Jin and Mateo. And they not only manufacture lights in the space, but they, they basically did a, an R&D lab in Oregon for five years before they even released their lights to the general public. And the failure rate's like less than one in a thousand. I don't think, in the last conversation I had, I don't think any have been returned at all. Well, and, and, but also it's, they, they, they do in-house, they got a license in Oregon so that they could do in-house testing from grow to rosin you know what i mean and really look at the percentages and what and tweak the lights and see what the end results are so that's so it's you know it's it's, it's good to see yeah. that people are getting into that that deep and and then you and what were they finding what's that like, what was that what were they finding with the lights like how did it influence well, the trike well we'll, we'll the bring band. them on and you're gonna have to watch the show it. and find yeah. out i guess i don't know yeah. <laughs> bring them out here we have some questions yeah. But well, I was hoping you were going to be vertically integrated, and then we can just have somebody come out there and I show hoping, you. I, I was hoping I would be vertically integrated too, but it's like a girl wanting to have a pony or be a ballerina. It's a big deal. It's not like, oh, it's a nightmare. I mean, this was hard enough getting these two licenses and finding one building to put them in, and be able to make our own hash and power our own topicals and edibles was the idea of also having a grow. Is just seems like wow, people do it, but. Yeah, no, for me, it, 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 so it wins the race here. We're trying, we're doing the best we can, and we know some people who are growing as well as I would want. You and, know, and like as many, I don't need to do it myself. And as many issues as you guys run into running your retail and all yeah. that, growers are running into just as many, if not more, because the regs are changing and things are, you know, you know you wait, to, they change the regs oh, all the time, right? And and or you can't can't use this product, or you know, you 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 have issues with disease and and yeah, viroids and all sorts of things so so you know it's nice to separate yourself from that too because you guys can focus on what you're doing and then yeah. and also what's really cool is making when you just repeat and rinse every time like you're making hash all the time and you're not yeah. growing it i mean you actually 
because you're less connected to the f product, you can be much more judgment. Like you, you can give a much clearer answer to the person than the person who's growing. Because a lot of times when you're growing it yourself, you give yourself way too much slack. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah, it's not really a good washer, but I'm still going to use it anyway because whatever. Whereas if you're, if you're not all resins created equal, like you can yeah. see clear differences when you wash from like how the, how it is to just process it Big to time. the resin itself when you're pressing it. I mean, it's like it's such a testament to how good it is, how good the flower actually is, or how good the resin was grown. Yeah. And I mean, when you start to do like fresh compared to dry and you do yeah. the numbers and you start going like, okay, well now I'm getting three to 5%. And then if you knock it up a percent point in that zone, it's huge difference. It's a 20% yeah. difference. You know what I mean? And so if you knock it up two, it's a 40%. So those things are like, you're working on these like tiny little well, it's also, numbers. how do you get like, there's like, if you're going down to the 40 or the 25 collection, how do you get more of your hash yield into the 70 or 90? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, that's and that's and that's very uh, strain specific, also too. So you'll get and like we were talking about earlier, like winter crop to summer crop and uh, timing of the harvest, and you know. So it, the only the big benefit to growing your own is that you you get into a rhythm where you at least like if, if you find something that works, you can just like and hammer on that really good and and you'll refine it. You know what I mean? Whereas if you're if you're bu buying off of different people, like they might not see the benefit that you're seeing because it might grow like shit. You know what I mean? It might be like, oh, this plant is the worst to grow. And you're like, no, 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 it's the best fucking process. Keep growing that. And they're like, yeah. you want me to keep growing the worst plant in my room? Like, no, they're just looking yeah. at what yields the best, what's going to bring back the best return. And so... Well, if it's larfy too, like larf nugs are great. I know, like, exactly. Have, That's what I'm saying. So we're you know, all... You get that comb out of the center of that bud. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's yeah. all larfy, it's, you know, it all comes off in the first wash. Right. right. Exactly. So that's where it's like the... It, it's hard to be the all all in one because if you're but the good part is if you if you are growing it like that yeah you grow them fucking 10 feet tall who gives a fuck you know what i mean like i don't care it's like it doesn't i'm not trimming it so it doesn't matter whereas yeah. growers also get stuck into that whole like they want weed that trims good you know what i mean has no leaf but no, be everything. No, no leaf doesn't really yep. doesn't really work in the hash makers world because you're like well that's where all the fucking action's at you know so you want like leafy but you just you, you took there. seven minutes to get there but you proved my point of why you should be using sunscape leds because <laughs> he, he, well he sat <laughs> in a test garden for five years so when you're speaking to a grower they're not only recommending their illumination but they're talking about the strains they've taken you know straight to rosin production all yeah. the the different varietals they've tested that didn't wash well that yeah. just got removed from the mix and his the, the oh. lights are tunable so it if they have data on previous strains they can pass that data along to the consumer so yeah. i'm really just saying when you're going to your, your grower that you like you know, yeah. they'll eventually they're going to upgrade their illumination. And this notion that any LED manufactured in China is the same is complete horseshit. So it's it, it, there's a lot that goes into the technology. So you, you'll we'll send you some info. You'll take a look. Yeah. Results too. I mean, you give the same. You give two different growers the same cut. You're going to have different washes at the back end. You can like drastically. You know, oh, yeah. and it's influenced by the lights, by the soil, by whatever medium you're in. Well, that was what I told him years ago, that there should be a competition where he hands cuts to people. They have to grow yeah. it out, and we all sample the sure. same cut, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The that same would be cool. Yeah. It sounds exciting. There's, there's it sounds exciting, and, 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 and it sounds exciting and really fucking miserable at the same time. You'd be like, hey, <laughs> we're going to smoke the same <laughs> weed the over and over. But it's yeah. not going to be the same. Uh, I know. It's but just it, but, not. But, it, but you'll be so burned. It'd be like you'll never drink that drink again after you puked it up yeah. that's the way you're gonna feel about that strain like, so, whatever strain it is, i disagree you never wholeheartedly that strain again no oh look mark's giving us a look from outside to see if we're okay what's going on mark and he's just looking you know he realized nobody was here in case we were coming to the end and we wanted to bring Jin and mateo on but we couldn't do that because we couldn't transition or anything because he was outside oh because irock was getting him high i see how it is i see how it is well, and how, how does one purchase a ticket as a uh, a patron or a contestant to Dabadoo? How does one, Ben Hanwerger? So we're currently working on the ticket sales platform. Like I said, it's going to be relatively exclusive given that it's private property, limited attendance, 
we're keeping it under 100 people and we're only selling 20 tickets. And we do want to do our due diligence on kind of vetting to make sure that there's no association to the competitors. So we're, we're going to get the ticket sales online. Um, if you want to reach out to either myself on Instagram um, or Cassandra at Sweetgrass or Ben at Sweetgrass Solvent List, um, we can get the, the individuals linked to purchase tickets. It's just we do want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence since it's so limited capacity. Gotcha. I like that exclusive uh, line. All it's not hundred people. Today. Honestly, I have to make no. It's just we need to know how many people are coming. It can't be that many. It's a small place. Well, in general, and it also, it's. It, I think any event over, like even like even over like two hundred is like super duper max, but it depends on the space, of course. But like over one hundred and fifty people, and it's already like you, your 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 brain doesn't really. You don't get a chance to talk to everybody. You're kind yeah. of like like those events well, that were I like. I want to relax and be. It's really going to be. Uh, family style yeah. listen we'd yep. love to offer up this bonus for your thing if you're only going to have 100 people there why don't you just offer up selfies with adam oh, so he can thing. easily do we'll 100 totally that night you know with yes. everyone there and just have now we're, we are going to have some really cool experiences during the event uh a cabin on the property that mila can do her book sales and book signings and meet and greets and it, it is going to be kind of something we try to make as special and memorable for everyone as possible. Um, and, and real quick, I just want to get my bird's eye view look at Sweetgrass as a, a consumer and a friend that saw it all kind of get built. But walking in to see like first check in area where, like I said, you, you kind of have like a, a Ben and Jerry's tour vibe of whether it's hash wash or rosin, whatever's going on that day. And then when you walk through, it's not a weed store. It's not like tons of points of sales and, and digital menus everywhere. It's an apothecary. It's a wholesome vibe of like all natural products, incenses with no chemicals. And like Cass said, all hemp and really high quality glass. And it's very wholesome and well curated all the way down to, and this is why I think they won truly best dispensary in masses. They curated probably the highest end menu of product that is available in the state. And it is hard to find right now, but there is some really good product, and they did the best job curating the menu. We tried. There was <laughs> stuff around by the time we finally opened. Do you so want to I give them your cash app or Venmo for them to get that sent over to you for the paid? No, I'm kidding. I, I'm sure I'm looking forward to it. Adam's told me a, a ton about what you were doing out there, and it sounds different than the, the standard walk in, place your order, walk out. We're trying. We're trying something different. And, you know, there's a big movement now. It's become more mainstream, which has its drawbacks and its positives. But, you know, the whole um, psychedelic psychiatry, post-traumatic stress disorder treatment and, and Johns Hopkins studies, like the whole psychedelic world has become sort of mainstream acceptable now. And there's a lot more interest in understanding that there's plant medicine. That that's and great. We always wanted that to happen someday, so it's happened. You know, I never thought prohibition. Would I can end. hear. I can hear in her voice. She's already like, "Oh God damn it!" Now, Let's go. now everyone's yes, doing the it. The trend has ah. already passed. Ah. Before I can catch the wave. It's like ah, but you know, we always wanted that to happen, and it's sort of happening. So great. People's grandmas are microdosing, and like all the straight world is into our shit now. Great. But drawback is it's all. <laughs> wow, you can hear it. I can the hear muggles. it. The muggles. She's like, God damn you. It's like owning right. a bar. It's like owning a bar. You know what I mean? Like I, I tell people, and you, if you own if you really like drinking, you might not want to own a bar. Right. So you'll be like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tread lightly because it's also, it's like when you get deep into the, whatever you love and then you see the both sides of it all because like, especially with cannabis, cannabis has always been like, you know, we, we had this idea like, oh, no problem. You you know best weed always is good weed always fucking sells itself but now we've literally got like great weed out there but people don't but the people who are growing it or who are distributing yeah. it they're so tired because they're they're so they've been taking so they've been doing it good for so long that they never did what everybody yeah. else did which is don't even care about the quality of the weed just fucking right. market the shit out of it you know what I mean? and that's the american way so it's kind of like the you know, we get what we, we we get what we fucking deserve in a way because like everybody's so fixated on mylar bags and bullshit. You know what I mean? And not not seeing it or smelling it. Like even just the the, the original 
dispensaries that opened up that, you know, some places it doesn't work. Like here in Colorado, you pull a jar out and show somebody the wheat all day long. Uh, By the end of the day, that shit's just dry as fuck, right? So, oh no, they don't show it to you too. They do this. Oh yeah, let me shake it in front of you. Ah. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Off. <laughs> what are you doing? How are you Boy, speaking of marketing, Cause though. Because Amsterdam was similar, right? They used to pull out little things and let you fucking pick out the bud you wanted. And no. those are the places that I liked. Yeah, those are the ones that I liked. And the ones but, they didn't. Uh, this is the whole thing is imagine. I, I kind of learned that year that I met you. You know, those were the times that I saw what a, what a weed store was. I never dreamt not to be like we'd be person who lived through Prohibition 50-year-old. But, like, honestly, I can't fucking believe it that I have a dispensary. Never, yeah. never thought. I never thought that this was going to happen. And when I was you know, 20 or whatever and saw um, Pollinator Shop and went to the greenhouse the first time and could buy weed and sit down and smoke it in a place in the city, I was like, unbelievable, right? So I, like, oh, I had a really high bar. Like, I saw what Adam was doing. I saw what, you know, all the, you know, Mila's son was doing. I had my first white chocolate with a half a walnut on top that had, um, it was the year that Jack Hare won, that Ariane won for the Jack Hare, and everybody was making edibles out of it. And it was like unforgettable experience. I mean, it's like the Proustian Madeleine that you never forget. And for the rest of your life, you're like, oh, I can never get back to the first time I had an edible, you know, that was that high quality. But, you know, so anyway, I, because I saw all those things, I was like, shit, I want to do something good. Yeah, well, it's Good also like you. it's like sharing that experience is always like fun because that was the thing when I first, when I first got there, I, like everybody, I got, I went to the grasshopper. My friend took me there, yeah. and I <laughs> pushed the button on the thing, and the, it lit up, and I could see the weed, and I was like, oh my god, dude! Like all it was was literally a doorbell, a doorbell like with a light. You know what I mean? Like that's all it, it took to to get me hooked. I was like, dude, this is amazing. I'm going I, here. I was and like, you did. That was it. That was it. That was a, that was the deciding point. Like this is it. I'm, I found I found my place. You know. Yeah, you really did. Well, getting back to when you were talking about marketing, if you're only going to have 20 tickets available for sale for Dabadoo, shouldn't we be like doing some big grand Instagram build up knowing that there are only 20 available, you know, like have it go live at a certain time or give out numbers or... I mean, All of these ideas are great. I'm, you know, I'm in charge of the social media. <laughs> I don't have a 14 year old genius working the social media. If you know, one, <laughs> what, should I be doing this uh, thing of which you speak? I will get right on it. Well, well Mark, Mark handles all that social media. How to do it. If you had 20 judges, you just have to do like judge number 20 is so and so, and then you bring it down to the number one judge. Number that's me, of course. So there you go. I like that idea. <laughs> number one judge. Go alphabetically reverse, please. <laughs> do it alphabetically reversed. So <laughs> the Z crew, they're first. They, yeah, they're number twenty. No, I was talking about because you're gonna sell twenty tickets, right? I mean that it seems that it should be done in some auction style yeah, or banner. You know where you can, you know, you maximize the marketing value of getting it out there. But well, you should do a thing where you you sign up to possibly get a ticket, and then like see how many people sign yeah. up. So if 100 people sign up, yeah, then you guys. That's, then, then that's you, kind of the are list. Are you trying to do consulting? <laughs> oh yeah, no, sorry, sorry. No, we just like to give it away for free oh, on the show. It's called giving it away for free right yeah, now. Just take it. That's how we do. Hours. That's how we do. Yeah, but if you do the sign up, then you'll you'll see. You can pick and choose too. You'd be like, all right, fuck that guy. No, well, we're, I'm thinking though <laughs> that if you if you worked it correctly, you'd have enough left over in the budget for plane tickets for Adam and I too, oh, instead of too. just that hotel. Oh, I see where this is going. I, I see. Okay, yeah. you're right. Yeah, we're yeah. working on that. Yeah. No, no joke. But this is all very good stuff. I hope I'll remember it when this is over. No, we will because show. it's being recorded. I watch the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have to watch the show. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's being recorded. Hopefully, we won't fuck it up and have to edit or anything out, and it'll be up there for. Ever. Did any of us say anything horribly inappropriate? No, 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 no. I think I, really I, I will say, Dave, that the uh, the turnout just in comments from Mila and the Dabadoo event page thus far, I'm I'm kind of building a spreadsheet of those in on Instagram interested, and we could sell the twenty tickets tomorrow without doing a post. So I want to be very cautious, but at the same time, I want to make sure, like you said. If there's opportunity to maximize it past the current ticket price, then may, maybe we do that just for the, the sake of the event being a little bit more heady as we're trying to make it. It's it's only 20 tickets. And then you and get plane tickets. Yeah. We, we don't want to always assume that everybody is as poor as we are. 
so that oh. there are some people out there right. who have a bankroll. Well, maybe they want to just, you know, kick down to the cause. I mean, kick down, bro. Mila is is one of the OGs that changed the direction of how we consume cannabis. And, and Shit, she, I should really say something about that. Can I have a quick parenthesis on of that? Of course. Hell yeah. I don't know who Mila Jensen is. Um, or Adam, you could do it. But um, Go ahead. Okay, I'll add to it. I mean, I'll give my two cents on her is that, um, and I'd say this with all the love for men that I ever had in my heart, I, I really am not, I don't have a problem with the fact that there's a lot of men who are basically the main personalities internationally in the cannabis industry. But it's like, whew, there's a lot of women. There are a lot of women. People just don't know them as well. And, the, you know, one of the queen bees for us all is Mila, who is like um, a true deep roots hippie woman who went overland from Holland uh, through all the hash producing countries, ended up in India and spent most of her life living in India. Uh, Tibetan Buddhism, all kinds of stuff, who had an extraordinary life already before it had anything to do with cannabis, but as a single mom watching her laundry turn in the machine, has this sort of eureka moment and sort of invents the tumbler concept, which she called the pollinator, where this is like a spinning drum. It's a way to create dry sift. And she went on to invent bags for making, uh, you know, uh, separation of trichomes bags, my, different micron bags. Which has been many times ripped Iso off. Isolata, the isolata. <laughs> you have to, you have to, everything has to be a later. In Fisher and Holland, at the 90s, it was a something later. later. <laughs> so <laughs> this is Kumila is briefly, and then she's written an incredible autobiography, which I had the pleasure of working on with her for a couple of years for the publishing company Mama Editions that I work you had, for. You had the pleasure of cutting it down, <laughs> cutting, cutting it down from 10,000 pages to. <laughs> and you're very nicely written about i love the part of the stuff about you in this book is really, uh, really nice. i got it documented where she basically tell, tells the same story that i always tell everybody which is she had that first machine she brought yeah. it over to my place i said you can leave it here for a little bit she's like all right and then i was like i was like this is the <laughs> shit right here i called everybody started coming up to my place i had like people with just like, everyone rolling up with garbage bags full of weed and i'd be like all right guys I'll take the first thirty seconds. You guys can have. The, you guys can have. The, you guys can have the rest. And they'd be like, "Oh, really?" And they'd be like, "Sure." And they'd be like, "Okay, I'm, I'm good." And they were like, "That's all you want." Ripped off like, all your I'm friends. Like, back That's all I want, man. You fucking guy. I was man. like, you know, I just want that. I don't want any of the other stuff because once you make it, oh my people, god! I mean, people were running it for twenty four hours. That's, yeah. that's, that's, they didn't. They didn't get it. I was like, you know, it's done after like like a couple minutes. It's already like way past. <laughs> it. Once you see the no, little, obviously they, they did not get that. And they were like, yeah, we got giant bags of what? You know, I mean, oh, yeah, it was. It was, it was, a, it was a big like, learning curve it's there. Like it's an instant pot or something, and then everybody's like, can we cook this in it? Can we cook this in it? Right, but it was fun because it was also like, you know, I. I got, I got a fridge for it. I put it in the fridge. Put like I would let it cool down. You know, I started to figure out. I figured out the cert. I figured out the a little bit. Behind, like okay, that's definitely going to improve it. And she was impressed because again, they were running for so long. They were coming out with this garbage. I was just like, and then Terry would come back with a little piece and show her and she's like that's not hash and he's like that's hash you know what I mean? because it was literally like you know melting <laughs> see yes, melting no. see-through yeah. full melt you know hash which is what you wanted no. but again yeah. you couldn't couldn't run it for much too long what i really liked from her which nobody seems to have adopted which is that remember she had the like nine foot long open-ended one do you ever see yes. that one which is makes a lot of sense. Like if you're moving a lot of weed from point A to point B, it's much more delicate. Uh, like say if I like, okay, I'm gonna take all this. I'm just gonna run it through this little tunnel, zippity doo mm -hmm. over to the, and it's gonna come out the other side. You know what I mean? And then whoop, and that's and that's it. It's straight line. There's no like chance for it to run too long. And if you and if a thousand pounds is gonna go from A to B and it's like a ten foot run. Uh, you're probably going to lose half that hash anyway along the way because it's just going to get, you know, people are sloppy, especially if it's about to fall off, right? By the time it gets to where it needs to, the chances of it actually getting into the to the final product is probably little to none anyway. So good way to collect that first top ten, top oh. one tenth of a percent. You know? <laughs> it's like, I mean, when you get really into particular separation of the resin head from the stock and to the point where you consider stocks contamination, Something like, yeah, yeah. Possibly well, 
rigorous and brutal. You know, it's like, well, oh my God, what are you doing? Well, that's what I liked about that other one is really it was like a two, it was like a two, one and a half to two t- drops. You know what I mean? It would go once twice and out the other side so that's pretty good you know that's what i mean that's, that's all you need anything beyond that it's kind of like eh, you know we're probably <laughs> yeah. it up it's the, same, it's the same as trimmers when i watch barrel trimmers oh, it's please. like oh, it's God. like you know yeah it, it can do a good job if you're if that, if you're wet trimming and that's what you do but nobody does that anymore hardly and and dry trimming, it's just like, oh my god, dude! Look at the destruction. Put it in slow motion and, and macro, oh. you will never do it again. You know what I mean? You'd be oh like, my god. Fuck. The, you hear the strike on screaming. <laughs> like, yeah. Slam, slam. It's like the abattoir of dry combs. It's like the slaughter. <laughs> yeah, no, bad, very bad. But listen, it's the reality of mass production. I mean, everything goes wrong when you go big, basically. Yeah, there is always a cap to everything. Like ten. <sighs> Like on a grow situation, I always tell everybody: like, once you get above ten lights by yourself, you're you're already like not doing as great of a job. But I mean, some you can, but it, when it comes to trimming, you're not definitely not because you you know you're going to be behind the ball there. But just in general, it's like you're going to you know you're going to miss a few spots here and there usually. And when it comes to making hash, uh, it's if if you have one type and you're just running it all the time, you can really fine tune it. But when you're dancing the dance of the different kinds every time it's like a learning curve each time where you're like oh now i get it you know what i mean like <laughs> it's figured it out Very good. and getting back to women in cannabis something i noticed in spain there were i thought it was 60 40 of women who showed up bringing us back to that subject that's well i i I attended the the women in cannabis event at akalata i I could say something but i don't know how's that dude yeah thank you david is attention to women that looked really fun it was it was a great event um they translated it into english portuguese and spanish so it took it took a little while um but i i looked around and it was not like the first 10 MJ Bizcons, you know, Woo! it w- w- it wasn't. This was truly an inclusive event in Spain. Um, so maybe Europe will repeat that now with Germany coming on. Maybe they'll do Spanibus Germany, <laughs> you know, I don't, their version of it. Sperm, <laughs> Spermany? <laughs> doesn't work. That doesn't work. Change that one. Try something. It doesn't have to be <laughs> they'll, they'll figure Spanish out Germany, what it's going to be. It's kinda... <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm looking forward to what's going to happen because there was, it, it span, while Spanibus was great, it wasn't yeah. roses the whole time. I mean, there were 20 police interventions in one night at the clubs so at the clubs yeah oh no that was awful yeah, yeah. so it, yeah. it felt and, and then and they did it that first night so everyone knew you know now you're on edge everyone was shell shocked nobody wanted to carry their rings around everyone. but you know what yeah. I have to say uh, uh, I only say this on behalf of my fellow Americans who this year turned up in on mass this year at Spanibus. The one year I hadn't gone in 12 years was this year. It was the first time I missed it in like 10, 12 years. Um, and it was the year that all the Americans went. But anyway, all of us who are here enjoying this massive freedom, um, you know, it's I don't wish this upon the Spanish clubs that got busted, but it was sort of a wake up call, like for all the Americans who were like, oh yeah, smoking in the street, everything's cool, everything's a weed club, no. it's open, it's legal. It's a very nuanced thing in Spain. That's why they have the social clubs. It's actually quite illegal and you have to be really careful. And people coming in from France and other parts with worse prohibition in Europe, of which there are many, they're super hip to that. You know, they're like, hey, put that out. Don't smoke in the taxi. Hey, what are you doing? Like everybody, <laughs> all the other Europeans are like flapping their arms all the time. Like, shit, what are you? You know, because they know that it's like, yeah, you can, get, you can still get busted there. You know, it's not like super it's not colorado i was afraid to walk into a club because there was a cop like you know uh, way on the corner over there dealing with like some traffic thing i'm like i don't even want to ring the doorbell and go in you know so it was of an age where you remember that this was very recently very illegal and still is in some ways i mean definitely in spain too so well i'm I'm, you know for another show but hopefully germany will now spread yeah. across europe and people will go you know what we're just going to miss out on the tax dollars because they're going to all go to germany now so 
you know. It's such a. It's so weird that 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 to me is more weird than anything. Like the idea of going to smoke weed in Germany, like it just doesn't make sense. It's, it's not. Cool. It's not high on my list. It's, it's exactly. Really cool. exactly. But we but have to. We can you have imagine to support Oktoberfest them? this year, though. How nuts that's. Oh be. yeah. Like everyone's gonna be like, whoa, wait a minute, Oktoberfest. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Think of all the I, I almost there. said, <laughs> when is? <laughs> yeah, when is Oktoberfest? <laughs> We should go. <laughs> That's when people say when I, when I do like I'm saying about 420. I'm like, so when is that? And I'm like, it's 420, dude. I was like, what else would it be? It's on 420 because we're gonna be we're we're, we're, yeah, we're gonna be doing a 24 uh, hour show next week. So if you guys wanna or two weeks from now, if you guys wanna join us. What don't do we're that? Eat I'm, I'm, you can. Dave's, yeah. Dave's gonna do four no. whole hours in a row before he gets tired. <laughs> Tandem, like four hours. Four no, hours. I Mar- think it's just dumb. But you know, he likes it because he'll trip balls the whole time. And, yeah, you know, it's, it's what and you I mean. won't. You, so you, you you smoke for twelve hours and then you trip for twelve hours and you're good. It's like that yeah. is the way to do it. Exactly. And then you're like crazy for the 36th hour that is the weird right. part is that I, I got better as it went longer yeah. so um proof we come need, on Mark. we need Don't you back in look. two you weeks you know i got better you know i was on more on fire. no you weren't you I were just was. higher I was higher and on more on fire so actually this is a double we're gonna need you guys back in two weeks you'll do danko okay. show then our show oh yeah back to back um yeah, back to me. back because it's a two week. you have a you didn't realize by coming on our show you agreed in principle to do danko show in two weeks because he automatically just pinches all of our Yes. So he'll, he'll, he'll no, I no, but I'm happy to comply. Yeah, he's, gonna, he's yeah. gonna be hitting you up pretty soon. Yeah, but he edits, so he might you might hear somebody yell, "Cut! Uh, oh, yeah. Let's do that again." Oh, it's super unprofessional. You know. <laughs> our sentences together, so we end up burp, 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 saying weird things. Uh-huh. Well, no, see, he would edit that out. No, he no. wouldn't want that in there. You doing sound effects? He'd no, be like, no, 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 no. no, no, no I no. do the sound effects. That's yeah. what he would say. <laughs> and he'd be like, only me. Yeah. That's tough because I'm a big sound effect person. I'll bear that in mind in future, per, you know, performances. <laughs> we usually have a lot of sound effects, but today not so much because well, uh, Vinny's barbecuing. Vinny's on the, on the barbecue. So. Yeah, it does look smoky in there. It, well, no, that's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's not real. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Come on, Cassandra. It's terribly realistic. Come on. We have to explain green screen to you. <laughs> it's like, we have big smoke around here. <laughs> we have really big smoke. Big, All right, big well, smoke. we're going to bring on Jin and Mateo from Sunscape yeah, sure. LED, and uh, we we should get you guys in touch because it, we kind of figure that it's, while it's a big community, it's really a small community of trust, and That's Jin true. has a great company, and his products were designed for the mining industry, so the safety standards are the same safety standards that would go into lighting in your pool so that you don't get electrocuted when you're hot tubbing. So uh, yeah. it, it's great tech. I mean, it really is great tech. So stick around. And thank you so much for joining us. Ben and so, ben, and bands. remember, don't release those tickets yet. Let's put our heads together. Okay, because we're going to make we a need quadruple quadruple we need the airfare. price. Quadruple the price, half the amount of hash. Genius. No. I'm just <laughs> what? I'm Wait just, a second. Hold on. Double the Who amount the of tickets. Who the fuck are you? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's become a capitalist. I don't oh, yeah. recognize him. Uh, At the end of the show, I've already figured it out. Yeah, 150 tickets. Nah. Everyone gets one tenth of one tenth of a gram. <laughs> no suggested <laughs> serving size. Oh, yeah, they, get, about... they get a suggested <laughs> serving size, which microscopic, <laughs> as suggested. Well, and and two two things real quick, Dave. One thing, um, one of the groups that these guys buy great flour from, they're under LED to an extent that like a lot of the HPS guys I work with are not willing to switch. Like you said, the times are changing. Love to talk People to them. People are going to need to change their what's yeah. over their canopy. Even if they did LED five years ago, they've only got another five years or so left. We do design and advisory work. Not going to talk about my company, but uh, go right ahead. The the bro that I work with that that hey. Cassandra buys from might be interested in talking to these guys. Yeah. I'd love to talk to these guys. So well, let's definitely is, stay in touch on that. It's like I, I compare it a lot of times to like DJs being reluctant to go digital back in the day, right? They were all like, dude, I'm carrying my vinyl like a dipshit forever. I don't care, you know what I mean? And they'd be like, wait, he's dude, right I, there, I, man. I, I know what the fuck? I, you can laughing. insult him? He's sitting right I know, there. I know I'm insulting him. It's fine. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> but, or they could so carry, a little, carry a little thing around and be like, I got paid twice as much and I carry nothing. Right? I got my iPod. Until, like, not I'm surprised right. they oh, even allow like HPS. Right. 
Like half those people even know what the fucking format sounds like. I know. I'm just kidding. You buy the no, white I, album. I again. just showed an HPS grower that's like very finicky, home grower, soil, small batch. Yes. Some of the weed from this company that Cass buys from. And he's like, I don't believe that that's salt grown wreck weed in Massachusetts under LED. I don't believe it. I need to see the grow. It's real. It can be done, yeah. but it's a matter of how it's handled. It, it's well, always about family. then stick around and listen to what Jin and Mateo have to say because I I wasn't shitting you. I met Jin in 2016 when I was with Calix Development, and at that time we had 980 thousand square feet of commercial real estate all being leased by cannabis operators. And all he wanted to do is have us, you know, almost like package his lights with the real estate. And I looked at what he was doing. I loved the idea, but we were going to go public and that would have made us almost way too plant touching. So it wasn't something we could offer the advice, but we couldn't require anything like that. But you wait till you see what they're doing. It's It really is the... You know the the top of the spectrum, pun intended, of of what's happening in the LED space right now. And I come from the energy industry. That was when I went to school. Can't tell by his low energy, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Like my lighting professor used to say, if you call it a bulb in front of me, I'm taking a score off your your final grade. It's a lamp. You know, his screensaver was an incandescent wow, lamp is looking, just like a, a simple now. eater. He's like, he's like teaching us. Or something. Yeah. How tall are you? Where the get, hell are you? What's going on? Like, <laughs> Let him get it out at least. Yeah, like, professor. That was like professor status there. Like yeah. you are below me. So, <laughs> Jen, these guys want to talk LED. Hi. So, uh, here's your headphones. I, 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 no, I found that on the camera. Yeah, you have to. This is a microphone and we want to talk right into that. Yeah, put this on. Hey, and those are headphones. Right We're talking to Massachusetts, by the way, just so you know. Hey. Yeah. I don't know if you guys hear What's happening? How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm from East Coast. I'm a Virginian. Oh, really? Yeah. So His horse is outside. outside. You can tell he looks. <laughs> looks. I'm a Virginian. I grew up in Virginia. So, uh, yeah, went to UVA, Charlottesville. So, East Coast, um, we're, we're ready to uh, support anything you guys got going on. Yeah. It's, um, hi, how's it going? <laughs> good. How are you? All right, so Dabadoo, everyone go to the Dabadoo events on Instagram that I remember. Um, what's your consulting company's Instagram there, Hempen? Uh, it's Bract and Pistol. Oh, that's easy to find. You can't spell that wrong. Pistol. Yeah, B-R-O-C-T-A-N-D-P-I-S-T-I-L. <laughs> Hold on. Go one more time. Yeah. <laughs> Bracked? Bracked? Did you say bracked? Yeah, Bracked Obama. B R A C T. Oh, God. A N D P I S P I L. Bracked and pistol. So you I can, can send it to you too, Adam. Mateo's going to follow you right now, I'm sure, on Instagram, and then send you pics of stuff. Oh, look at what you went and did. He can't find it. Turned his phone sideways. You you just text no, Adam. Pistol. 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 Yeah, I'll text Adam right now. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> it's all right. Never mind. He's. So, Jin, did you want to buy a ticket to Dabadoo? It's only $1,200. <laughs> yeah. Where is it? When is it? What is it? There's only 20 it? tickets it's available. It's there's only 20 <laughs> tickets. Would you like to buy two tickets? <laughs> They're $2,400. Um, it's <laughs> May 18th. <laughs> it's charge. It says it's the 19th, but I'm, I have it on good authority. It's pretty much the 18th and uh, of May in um, Rhode Island. It's technically in? No, technically it's Massachusetts, but okay. it's very close to Rhode Island, very close to Providence, very yeah. close to Adam's old. <clears throat> the, powers, the power situation is very uh, unique out there. Yeah, I was going to say, how do they even allow HPS with power being in such limited supply and so expensive there's a uh, so most of the massachusetts regs sorry most of the massachusetts regs call for certain power density and again a lot of it goes to like yeah power if density. your light was listed on like design light consortium it's potentially exempt for led uh, if it's a certain micromole per joule, yes. uh, there's certain classifications in like New York for uh, watts per square foot. But yes. again, it kind of becomes 
how do you just do it at the highest efficiency moving forward with yeah, LED sure. and dimming schedules? Yeah. It's the future, for sure. Yeah, we we definitely been working pretty hard on this situation. I, see, I can see everybody. There was a, a bong in front of him. Oh, look it. Yeah, so we're excited. So we had some friends in Massachusetts and Boston definitely uh, gave our lights a try. Had a, had a you know pure third, you know side by side. Yeah, and uh, he was a breeder in Boston. He had a really uh, extraordinary results. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I would love to tell you guys a little bit about our LED lighting company. It's my little yeah. journey of startup for seven years, eight years now. Eight years. Well, I, I said that before you got on, yeah. that we met in 2016 yeah. when I was on the Calix project. So, yeah, that is, that's yeah. eight years. Yeah, so oh. being, being, being in the East Coast of Virginia, you know, going to Arcata. No, I've America. known Christian. Okay. Oh, we're about Christian so yeah, so our LED lights uh, were measured based on like the Arcata mountain top. Well, a friend of mine was growing out there when I was in college, and then and um, I was always knew that he had the best land. He was into you know his own sustainable land development. He basically built everything his own, like you know, on the the plast, You know, he's, he was very handy with a electrical stuff as an electrical engineer buddy of mine so i went out there when i after figure out like like led chip in 2006 15 16 that's when the efficiency just got over the material I, first thing i did was went out to visit john on his land and we did like a measurement of the outdoor sun and then try to understand the amount of ppfd and understanding the, all the environments and then what we're seeing actually today is like the craft cannabis um the best best quality cannabis growers the it does the more hands-on the more like almost craft scale it's it's where you get the quality right the better quality and um the power uh situation can be much much uh adapted to local <laughs> environments right so we see your the insulation of the building your total you know how your moisture and the temperature is controlled and we were lucky enough that we got into a Oregonian um, uh, craft cultiva cultivation center for since 2017. So all of our research around our lights is fact and evidence based on our own experience with our lights and in this craft cannabis uh, cultivation environment, where um, you know it's just sometimes data don't lie. You just follow kind of what the plan tells you by building sensors. We geeked out on sensors and just trying to listen, trying to find ways to learn about the plants because we obviously our electrical LED guy, engineer guys that's never you know grown until 2017. But just being part of the community, picking up anecdotal uh, tips, tips, and also understanding how to collect data and track data and then try to move to forward to develop a efficient program. And I, I I, the, I think the sky is the limit in which we control energy and balance water and being able to further understand every single strain and plant is so different. Every genetic, every species, its own, yeah. you know, completely be different beast, right? So by being more and more listening to the plant and learning about it, we are, as engineers, we're able to develop more and new tools that are number one, robust, waterproof, and really can long last long time. And what we learned today from our uh, six months follow on as single source today, who's you know who's our first number one customer here in Colorado, they they take the lights much lower. They like they they then that's the thing that uh, Logan got it. He's like, hey Jin, we c I can choose what to take it away. Uh, which is really interesting. That's what he's doing, right? Low, you mean lower as far as intensity, or you mean yes, in yeah, so, different spectrums? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so lower lower the intensity because he follows the plants as cues, right? I, I seen it too. I, yeah, the, I was always like dropping it lower yeah. and seeing plants being happier. Being exactly. Like, the fuck's going on here? Like, okay, this is weird. Less is more. Less, realize, less is like, no. And and Adam, that's that's where the crossover <laughs> with the HPS guys when HPS is hitting like nine hundred, maybe a high end fixture hitting like twelve hundred. Some of these higher end fixtures are putting out 1,700, 2,000 BPFD. And yeah. I, I don't think a lot of the growers understand how to adjust the environment or the feed or the CO2 to balance that. And oh, they're not comfortable with it. So What's they immediately thing? just revert to old school technique where what I do see with LED is driving like a peak at your your week five, week six, like your, your peak production. 
and ramping up and ramping down from there, both with your feeds, all your inputs, you can get really high quality, real high yield Absolutely. at very low cost input. And yeah. and I agree, Jen, I think there's a way to take this whole thing kind of like full circle where natural gas generators are being powered, heat's coming off of them from to absorption chillers for cooling, but then your runoff is being treated to create the biogas that's feeding the generator, yeah. where the one talk that I heard on another podcast with another gentleman that I, I thought was very interesting, the only thing that HPS and metal halide have different than LED, LED is an electrode uh, diode. What the, the other bulbs have is a gas exchange that the sun has the gas exchange. We know that. LED doesn't. And how do we, we've always anecdotally been trying to replicate outdoor. Whether it's blue metal halide for spring light and it's red for fall light for mm -hmm. harvest and, and flower. How do we continue to replicate that? And I've asked some other LED companies that I've worked with, like, is there like a tablet that you could put in that breaks down and creates a gas within the fixture behind a lens that at peak intensity, it's higher gas with a more red spectrum. And at lower intensity, it's more blue with, with still some gas. But what is that gas exchange okay. of the sun versus LED doing? Okay, so LED is a man-made material and it will produce monochromatic uh, 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 chips. So um, all of our white LEDs you see on the total market, you, anywhere you go, just general light bulb LED, right? As long as that yep. light bulb LED is white, you can, count a, you can count on it that when it first was a LED diode, man-made material, it was a blue LED. It makes blue straight lights. So they put a phosphor, a little yellow phosphor. So the, the process, you, you get a, you know, a wafer, dissect it into tiny like, uh, pieces of LED material. And then because there's, you know, positive negative junction, you add electricity, the, the material, the man-made material of LED takes a lot of energy and it separates. There's no mechanical explosion. So it just, it's, a, it's a, we're playing gods. I mean, we're, I mean, so I, I, you're right. talking oh, to the engineer, I go, oh, oh yeah. Human, yeah. monkeys. You're, we're so shadow banned now. You're, by the way, um, Adam. Yeah. Smartest kid, the smartest person in the entire room is sitting over there. He's doing tens Google Tensor APIs. I know. The, he's like, he, we're be, he's building one of us right now, and we don't even know it. You know, look, like, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Amazing. <laughs> so, um, I wouldn't but, be too close to him right now. Every yeah. credit card in your wallet right now, he has. <laughs> he has your contacts and videos. <laughs> Yeah, you should have deleted those. I'm just saying. Sorry, I'm digressing. I was because I was talking to Adam's son. He's doing the, something. He's actually working and connecting to with the TensorFlow of Google. I was just like, this kid is awesome. It was, <laughs> anyways, you know, it's, it's changing. Like the when when we created semiconductor less than about 70 years ago. With and then from my understanding of the physics of semiconductor in that realm, LED is the biggest, right? We're very big. We're micron level, and then transistors at 10 nano level, 10 nano size. Right, so as we expand our you just realization, everybody. Oh, okay, now we're my back no, to LED. No, Explain it. We got it. Yeah, no, Adam, just you to keep. Um, uh, just you. I'm playing the dumb everybody person. <laughs> Not everybody gets it. LEDs, LEDs are like, are we can like it's there. You see it. It's not. Sorry, yeah. It's not like a this tiny, guy gets it. Micro macro shit is like tiny little. It's on top of on top of a grain of sand or something. So we're not. But I get to, I get to bring back to yeah, the how question. Yeah, how many doors up over there? No, it's my fault. I got to bring back to the question. So the question was, so the difference between the the mechanical world, right, which is micro explosions, yes. heating, electricity. There's literally the sun's happening. It's like an arc. Oh, and then a, arc. yeah, a sun's happening. A material that you know creates monochromatic. Uh, spectrums, right? So, so by do, having the monochrome spectrum, how do I get a white light? Because the white light is a wide, many, many colors blended into white, right? So they put a yellow phosphor. And then the way that you can put the yellow phosphor on the little, if you ever look at the LED under a microscope, the yellow phosphor is the one that makes that blue light into um, different color temperature in the old world, which we're talking about general lighting with, or cameras and stuff like that, you know, like where we talk about, you know, um, uh, 3,500 3, K is a uh, uh, right. fire, you know, when you're candle lights and the dates and then 6,500 K sh sh sharp blue is, you know, Dave's favorite office uh, uh, working what? environment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, donuts in the morning. Donuts standing, in the morning, standing, office oh, environment. Oh, yeah, standing by <laughs> the water counter. What happened to bagels? He, he, Dave just like, <laughs> dying to get back bagels. to that career. He switched over to donuts? Getting back to that career. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't, don't say bagels, no, man. <laughs> don't so, say bagels. So, so anyway, so now so far we man-made all this. So from one single uh, uh, nano spectrum of light, we made a white light, right? Now the white light, is, uh, we can see it, but also from a, uh, the rest of the problem is supply chain, right? You have a big old, long, arduous process of materially making this LED dials. It starts with uh, man-made sapphire. So man sapphire is the substrate of every single LED. And a bunch yeah. of work jewelry, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's, <laughs> is that yeah. what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Work jewelry. They love that shit. <laughs> they love Very man sapphire. All that. And cord. Sorry. Okay, back, back to the question. <laughs> Carry on, sir. I'm, I'm going to get back to it somehow. So let me know if you I'm sure? getting closer. Okay. I, you lost me a few minutes ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. He's an engineer. Don't ruin it for the rest of us, Dave. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening. Uh, teach me. He's just making me laugh now. Oh, yeah. Spanish good. is good. I win. Yeah. Anyway, so um, now, so now we're back to this idea of okay, so um, how much energy can be uh, 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 separated, right? And then from the efficiency perspective, it's physics calculated. Uh, theoretically, one joule of power can do 270 lumens, right? So we're at 230, 240 now with LED. So any kind of this man-made material, we're converting nearly one joule, one watt. A watt is a joule, is a watt is the same physical power. And then we're getting we're about like, you know, 230 joules, uh, lumens per 280, you know, basically nearly 80% efficient. Which is, and, and HPS is 50%, which converts. 150, 150 lumens, yeah, around 50%. Yeah, exactly. and it converts half of its energy into infrared, which would be heat to you and me. And right. that would, that's just so wasteful yeah. back to the original power being limited and expensive on the East Coast. Right. It just seems um, a no brainer right. to migrate to LED. And if you're that grower who is so just I use HBS and that's what I'm going to use, we want to talk to you. <laughs> but could, could, if I can focus on specifically that physical phenomenon real quick, radiant heat, right? So if you have HPS and look, oh, you have a light source that's putting radiant heat into your canopy, all of a sudden that's affecting your temperature and your humidity at different levels. So literally by having different heat coming from above, you're, there's <laughs> microclimate happening every 12, 15 yeah, inches, definitely. probably less. So all of a sudden, everything that you're growing under that plant structure is its own little microscopic pick microclimates under a nutrient that you fed you know what i'm saying so all of a sudden nothing kind of is according to you but sometimes you hit you know we plant you know so the the, ma the rest of magic right rest of it is you, you think about it you you, you want to give photo energy as light source but the heat you want to control perfectly on almost every levels right so by eliminating that radiant heat you all of a sudden have your that humidity, the dry, the aeration, all that stuff, and then all of a sudden you're getting deep, you know, really high, 11, 1200 ppfd, even at the root zone level, right, mm -hmm. right now. So all of a sudden, half the energy you're getting all the way to the root zone, 1100 ppfd at the, you know, 12 inches off your your soil or soil. So all of a sudden you say, okay, what do we take it away? To and now we can have better dry, we have a better homeo um, sta stasis, stasis right. uh, you know, temperature and humidity in the plant structure. And that's where, uh, you know, fortunately, our craft growers need to get there, right? Our indoor guys, indoor guys, we need that little bit of yield, right? To, to get that highest quality and the yield because at the end of the day, I'm, you know, our Oregonian situation is indoor is competing with greenhouse, right? So you I mean, you're, you know, the quality, at the quality level, right? And the consistency level. So it is a, I'm just saying, it, it is a business level decision to objectively optimize your input versus your output and then be really focused on your kind of uh, objectives. And that, with the LED, with our LED, we were able to provide that precisionness for the facility designers and you know business owners to say hey i want that and we will deliver that because we kind of follow along studied it and that's, <coughs> that's where it's at you know what i mean yeah well i think also the, the the two two things that anybody who's growing with hids if they just take into account that not having to chill your room so cold because you're trying to compensate for all this heat that's coming in yeah the amount of energy that's going into there yeah 
being able not to raise your leaf temperature too high, which is, I think that's the key to LEDs. I think that's what turned my brain over where I was like, oh, that's the radiant heat. It's literally like the difference between, it's like how you feel, it's like how you feel compared to like, if you're like just having it cook on you, you're, you're, you're warm for a second, but you're not really to the core, you know what I mean? And so it's like at the end, when you can actually bring the temperature up, everything just processes faster. The plant starts moving quicker. It's just that you, with HIDs, you're always, uh, raising the leaf temperature, which the plants do not like, you know what I mean? It's a, yeah. That eight degrees is a huge difference. Like at the end of the year, you're like, wait a minute, huge. so my rooms can run eight degrees warmer? Fuck, that's well, you, huge. Babe, you know? Your VPD is... Well, I'm, awesome. I'm glad you yeah. hit that nuance, Adam, because like from a lay person's perspective, like it really just is the, the age old adage of like, you can, you run your room at 75. If you switch to LED, you're run, you're going to run at 85 and 10, 15% higher humidity. And when these kids switch, they don't have the ability to either humidify their rooms or they're overcooling and or not trying to run the right temp schedules. And it's a simple, quick kind of like 10 degree, 10% switch that it works for most people. If they're comfortable, a lot of them are not comfortable saying like, oh, I'm going to finish my flower at like 72, 74 degrees and like above 50% humidity. And and again, it goes to that kind of the radiant with HPS has given them that extra dehumidification. It's yeah. given them that extra push and kind of avoidance of any microbial growth where with good plant health and good BPD at 60% humidity, you can finish really fire flower with no mold in it. And that's the balance where a lot of the LED growers that have transitioned they can't bring their head to wrap around that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, I think every, I think we said, I see for, my first crop, I fucked up right out of the gate. I was like, Oh, what's going on? And I, everything was just like sad. And I was all, Oh wait, and yep. it just brought my temperatures. And I wasn't thinking about VPD at all that time. And I was like, I looked at my nose. I was like, Holy shit. I am. So I'm upside down right now. You know what I mean? And then once we drained it all in, I was like this again, this, you know, I, I liked, I liked the idea of, of, the atmosphere of HIDs always did, and that was my big like, nope. I like that atmosphere. You know what I mean? Because it creates something. Like you, you, if you don't LEDs, the, my biggest yeah, and, 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 and well, some of them just where so it produces heat. a better product. Adding heat, some of like them are so just weird. like, no, it doesn't. It's not as good for me. Well, okay, eat, eat, to each his own. But at the end of the day, if you have an LED light that's 600 watts that you're running at home that you don't have to use CO2 and you never run it over 50 percent, and you're getting two pounds out of a four by four, you're crushing what a thousand watt used to produce. And you yeah. gotta look at the metrics and quality and say, does all of it work for me? At the end of the day, it's it's personal preference, but you can do a lot more with LED than people give it credit for. Well, you used to, and the thing is, I, I learned quickly in Holland too, because uh, nobody grows a thousand watts there, right? So everything's 600s hmm. and it, and I used to like be like, no man, America, because I was always like, I come my my friend's house, I come, come back to America, I'd see everybody growing with air cooled lights, thousand watts, s- dropping them down onto the thing, and it looked to me, it looked like the most productive, right? So I come back nice. and preach that to everybody, and they'd be like, nah, no, no, you hang the lights fifteen feet up in the air. And I'm like, what? No, this is not the way to do it. You know what I mean? But that that's exactly where it all went. It's like the, that's where we're at now. Everybody, if you're growing with, if you are growing with HIDs. You have them really high up, and you have a whole fucking room full of them, and that's the only yeah. way to do it. You, you got hot spots everywhere, <laughs> and, you, and you do have hot spots everywhere. And there's like definitely could be <coughs> can be more efficient. But and like he said, the microclimate. Sorry, what's your name? Top right. They're all Ben. Well, it's ben. Hash Ben, ben. <laughs> Dead Ben, <laughs> and Cassandra. Right, Cassandra's not Ben. She's but easy. back to what you were saying <laughs> earlier, Ben, about the uh, Hash Ben, about the the HPS grower who's reluctant to switch over because their thinking is still, I'm going to have to switch over and figure it out. No, you don't. There's years of data to back how to transition. There's years of data how to tune your HVAC, okay? This is not, you don't have to figure it out like Adam did. You don't have to go, well, why, why is it, you know, it's, it's, it's ready for you, okay? So you're just sort of, you, you know, you're, you're really, you're sticking your head in the ground and you're ignoring change. I mean, we all went to school at one point in time and had a textbook that had a version number on it. There's a reason why they <laughs> amend them and they add to them and they make right. them more efficient and, and give you the best information possible because we learned. If this was 10 years ago, 
Well, no like fucking it. way. It wasn't the technology might have been ready, but people didn't oh. understand. Well, what nobody you know wants now. nobody wants Coke bottle sized buds anymore either. That was the thing back in the day. Fuck it's no. Like whatever you could grow under there, you could get rid of it all. Right? And you, people were like, "Whoa, look at that thing! It's Big huge!" Thing, and you'd yeah. be like. Thank you. Take no. That. But now it's, now it's all lumber. Nobody wants it. You know, so it has to be these individual small, tight buds, which is... You guys are really setting me up for a joke. I'm just going to pass on it. Oh, no. no do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you are not representing <laughs> women correctly <laughs> then. Oh. Size game stuff. Make a I'm testicle let joke. It let it go by. Uh, oh. <laughs> Well, you can't lead. But no, you can't leave it like that, yeah, Cassandra. We're going to get hate up. mail. Maybe you can come up. back for Patreon. Oh, yeah, Patreon. If you want to tell us on Patreon. Then, uh, <laughs> yeah, people pay a dollar five, so you could use you can say swear whatever. words. You can say whatever you, say whatever you want. Right. You can send the last $25 for the version where we go off on a tangent about that. Oh, good. Just okay. dirty weed jokes. Like should, like should we talk yeah. a little bit about different types of LED lights? I want to say of something. Course. <laughs> like, wait, wait. Mateo wants to say something. Let's not talk about other LED companies. One thing we definitely <laughs> focus on, and Single Source proved it, they pretty much hit the home run, the first run, the first crop. So that's what we're definitely not consultants. We don't have a consultant division that we try to charge people money. Um, we Nine out of ten of our clients are really good friends of ours that we just want to see people succeed. That's our core mission, yeah, because lighting, we're infrastructure, yep. right? We want to have every client of ours succeed as a thing <laughs> and be resilient. And I feel like we actually can provide a tool that helps oh, people man. be res more resilient, save energy, and drive through some interesting times, yeah. Um, but I do want to talk about one more thing. Uh, there's different types of LEDs since I'm here, like not often. But um, when when selecting LEDs, there's you see this idea of IP rating, She's and then they, that's a way of indication, like as though that it's, it's a, any form of level of like waterproofness. But as it turns out, IP rating is for safety. It's actually a very much a misnomer in the electrical world. It's like oh, you got an IP rating, and this has got to be. This is waterproof. No, IP rating is for safe to touch. This is, is saying is that under certain different levels of wetness, uh, yeah. that electronic component is physically safe to touch. Under our conditions, and, and one of the things I want to stress, like when you, when selecting anybody's LED, ours or anybody's LED, you want to really think about uh, these like electrical components that are exposed to sometimes 80 to 90 percent humidity so waterproofness is probably something that i do want to talk so you're about. saying I after after touching the led you want to be what's called alive <laughs> exactly and not dead okay so well, and, cassandra and you got that Listen, I'm, I'm, his lights are that fucking enough. bomb. You, won't you die. don't die. You don't die. You don't even die. You don't die. You're being dead. Not like the leading brand of LED, oh, which yeah. kills 57 Kill people a week. Nine out of ten users. <laughs> die. Nine out of ten users die. <laughs> just having damp hands. They're not even standing in a bucket of water. They're just kind of sweaty palmed or something. You're making another nervous guy joke. Okay, great. All so right. you see, that was two. You could have gone how into it. Be, how could you get electrocuted in a situation like that? So he's saying that these are touchable. Let the guy carry so, on. And, <laughs> and to, your, to your point, Jim, no, that's when, not... when people are using LED in ver vertical settings, especially, I'm not sure how, exactly the configuration of your lights, but yeah. uh, if a typical like Inventronics driver is mounted on a top rack of a, yeah. a, a double or triple tiered setup yeah, and the HVAC supply is blowing cold air on a hot driver, uh -oh. That those hot drivers tend to fail a lot quicker than the ones on the first tier racking, where Dave they're in a more appropriate climate. <laughs> and and I that's agree where the, the the failure rate inside the drivers, not even the the lenses, the bulbs, the cord, the the components inside the drivers. When the driver starts to sweat internally, people yeah. overlook what they can't Just see. Like Dave. <laughs> Just like Dave. I think Jin wants to to marry you right now. Yeah, you really know your stuff. He yeah. has a man crush on you. Yeah, yeah. He's really getting a man yeah. crush right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. You guys could bro out later, you know, exactly. and call each other bro. <laughs> he does everything. You know, you, you both How wear hats. You really, like, fully grok. Like, let's just be honest. You Sorry. you guys talk a lot about lights and stuff. Adam, you're a grower, a breeder, you're, you know, you're just savant. That He's guy. So this all makes sense to you? I mean, how much of that was like, yes, yes, yes? All of it, but yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think that was Damn. For me, it was like, <laughs> she, 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 you and Dave just shit cut out. No, right no, away. I understand like, the energy <laughs> behind it. I understand um, what they're talking about. I well, might no, not have put it into practice. What's awesome to hear, though, is that when you hear, so I know, I know what Jin's hearing when Ben is, 
it's just whenever you listen to somebody who has a real experience, like real world experience and or is around people with real world experience, it comes out so obvious and 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 if it's it makes sense yeah whereas the minute you're trying to like sell somebody and you're making up numbers and you're yeah. like uh, he's like dude so uh, what the fuck's going on here yeah. and and that's why <laughs> I, that's, that's what that's what he was identifying right there was like oh shit real world experience yes that's like you only know that when it happens you know yeah. you don't know that just because you made it up you know so ben yeah. the real reason i'm currently like running my, through my memories because we started with inventronics so the actually that was a, a company that we started with. we didn't stay with them um yeah. um but we do um you know power driver is very very big part of it and so happens that we've gone through like a lot of them and we wanted to make sure that we have you know very strong you know it, it needs to be a big company to support power drivers so we do usually use the big big name ones yeah and uh, even tron was our first one so um that, that's that Riz- what happened he said his he said his first one he yeah Riz- he Riz- mentioned his first but i didn't stay <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> exactly that's where i started <laughs> what, how do you explain this like a girlfriend you know the, the current one get pissed off so. well, it's well, like it's like back in the day with lumatex when they first came out and they were running on some the same frequency as all the TV sets. Oh yeah. And fucking everybody, EMC. like they they basically were like Super Bowl, like some grow. My friend was running a grow, and he just like all of a sudden he had all these fucking cops at his place, and they were like they had all these machines, yes. and they fucking triangulated his spot, and yes. it was like, oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? Exactly. You got busted because of the Super Bowl? Because everybody was so mad, they were calling, "There's fucking something wrong here." And they were like, what? 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 So here's the video. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Power wash your fucking lights. Yeah. I, so, what? so, so that's what I'm trying to say. The difference, because you know, it's like you really want to make sure that you want to get something high quality, right? So, I believe what, no matter what you, we all deserve to have some industrial grade products in our uh, grow environments because we do quite a bit of, you know, good work in that environment. We deserve better. So, I, that's one of the things I do want to say that differentiating safe to touch then versus a light that's gonna last you forever and in, that's the value well especially when you're going into like you got these rebates now and stuff and they don't give you the rebate like yeah let's multiple definitely times. talk you about get, the you, never you get rebates. like a one deal it's a one shot deal so you might as well go in and get exactly. the best thing that's going to last the longest so you're not like and yeah. we need new lights two years later and, yeah. then, and and the thing is when you when you look at how easy these things are to clean and you compare it to like if you have a thousand lights in a in a place and you tell some guy that it's his job is to clean those lights and it takes him like don't touch him you might die five minutes per light you're like there's a threat of death yes threat of death we 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 know you're we're not paying you that much and we need you to come at really shitty liability you need to to spray this water on these lights stand stand in this puddle why do it please and uh (laughs) you'll be fine no but there's and literally depending on which light you're That's talking about. I've got all different types, ones with lenses, ones without. The ones without lenses, there's no way to clean those. That's impossible. Yeah, that, that, impossible. That, that's you can't just, touch them. You can't do anything with those. And you just and if you if you look in your room and they're doing any kind of fumigation or anything, you know there's micro droplets everywhere and they're landing on everything. And if they're landing on your LEDs, they're not helping it for by any means. There's no yeah. there's no way they're helping it. It's messing with that phosphor. And and you're going to so wear phosphor. those things out at a certain phosphor. point. And then so so you look at that and you say, okay, so that's not like, especially if you got the discount, you know, you're not going to go back and say, oh, I need new LEDs. Give me the new discount. They're going to be like, no, dude, that was, you switched from HIDs to LED. That's why we're giving you the fucking discount guy. You know, you're like, oh, okay, shit. Jin's light's 100% modular. The chips, diodes, Um, like... Well, it can all come apart. It's not yeah, like yeah. well. That's a def- that's how you defeat Moore's like law. Optimus Prime. Well, and, and Jen, much. can you go? Can you go bar for bar replacement right now? Bar, uh, what do I mean? Replacing what? Another bar? Like what? What? What Indivi- am I replacing? Individual bars. Save one bar. Yeah, individual that. bar. Yeah, fixtures. for sure. Can you? Can you? If if somebody has a, a facility that say the light is no longer in production, they're using Inventronics drivers currently, but they're wired up to regular dmx cable can you help them as they start to have failure replace bar for bar and be their kind of like safety net moving forward their light provider moving forward of course of of course i I, I don't know about fixing their old lights but we can get them new lights (laughs) no they would just yeah i mean and and then the other thing i was going to ask kind of higher level question whether single tier double tier triple tiered 
uh, I know some people are doing the drivers and the, the kind of power servers out of room, but wh where would be your recommended driver mounting site for some of these companies to, that are going to do either single tier, double tier? Is it like Off to outside the left. of the, so, the paneled room on the ceiling? To the left. Where, where, what do you think? <laughs> what, what, what's the question? Is, that, is it where, where to put the drivers? Where to where put the drivers? On the left. It? Come on. Dangling. Dangles, dangling to dangling to a little to in, the left. In the reservoirs, with outside of the oh, reservoir. Oh, reservoir. There's a woman on the call. Above a reservoir with one screw. That's what I would recommend. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> So, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I guess my question would be is if it's if it's single tiered and somebody has like a full paneled room, are you going to try to keep the drivers on the panel outside on the ceiling and keep the heat out of the room? Or are you going to, let's say, second scenario in a double tiered room where the supply might be blowing on the second tiered rack? What's your best suggestion for driver placement so you don't have those condensations and potential failures and... You, you have the best long-term use. The, the, best dry, or the best way to keep drivers is definitely remote ballast away from the fixture because right now the, you can get them DC connection so, wire, 30 feet, I can get them fairly reasonably priced, right? So if you have good access pricing for DC connection cables, remote ballast is by far the, for large facilities, right? Because I think we calculated it was like 64 lights is a pretty much a ton of uh, HVAC. Um, of dry, the amount of energy you save on a driver. Is that scientifically speaking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, for the in, amount of heat, that, yeah, like six per, it's a six percent per light, right? Mm -hmm. That you, you on the driver it goes to heat. So right? put it outside the room. Yes. Remote ballast, right? Yeah. Now, so yes, yeah. dangle to the left, left that, outside the is room. Is that legal though here? Because weren't they weird about that back in the day? Denver's really sit. Because we always had a problem with with being able because you couldn't separate your shit, and I was like, really? It's, it's the imagination of the electrical contractors. If they can work right. with you, they actually reduce fire risk because you're putting fire risk material closer centralized in with the your wiring closet, whatever. Yeah, your, of course, your panel sense. closet, and you yeah. can have it all ready to go exactly you know. you, you lose, there's no safety issues when in the middle of the harvest you have a one light that goes out it's all numbered you just right. one yeah. guy no, boom it's boom the wrong size you know it's done you know so because our fixtures we you know there, we're our fixture failure rate is less than like 0.1 percent like a, so we never need to mess with the fixture the, really the issue is right. the ballast which you yeah. the power driver which you are surely uh, appointed to so Jin did you even talk about your controls setup and how oh you have R2, your R2D3 oh yeah <laughs> his, his star so Jin <laughs> consulted on Star Wars and uh, Wait, so he created R three two five or something like that. That is the brains behind everything. Cassandra, can you make hey, some beep bop boop bop? This is the this is the Rebel Alliance, right? We're, we're part of the Rebel Alliance here. Yes. This, I thought this was the organization where we get you know, get closer to the Rebel Alliance. You know, we, we were promised secret handshakes so into the Rebel Alliance after this uh, sesh. Rebel Alliance, like, yeah. The yeah. Rebel Alliance with the cause. Anyways, yeah. Uh, so because we, we, we've been doing this for seven years, growing and developing LED lights, we realized the lighting schedule is your precursor. Anticip you, know, it gets, you can get ahead of the curve on understanding what's going to happen in temperature, right? Because we control the sun. We know the schedule. Wow. So we build a, right. some software that's, that's we're bleed, like stepping into controls where we can anticipate um, temperature drop or rise based on our understanding of the lighting schedule and then uh, pre uh, coordinate and uh, call for dehumidification capacity right and then our first version is being installed and then it's it's pretty it's pretty sick you're able to manage your vpd like perfectly you know so basically whatever you want on your vpd nighttime daytime transitions being in again back to oregon in the Willamette Valley, it rains nonstop. Like it just like what? once you start raining, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you guys, do, Colorado, you guys in don't Oregon? have the powdery mildew issues. We, we rain? What's that? Yeah. We we did not so have powdery mildew. You guys don't have Eagle Twenty in Oregon or what? <laughs> hey, yeah. So Eagle, we, we 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 can't. We're not allowed to mention that word. Like, Wait, Jesus. Hash Ben has a question. Okay. Hi. Can I? Uh, can I, well, so other other Ben's Hash Ben. Can I ask you a oh. question though? The the <laughs> the BCD thing, too many Bens, man. He can't handle you, it. I know. Are you guys integrating any sort of IR sensor in each fixture to actually measure leaf surface temperature, or are you just doing it based on temp and humidity? Guys, uh, can you just 
IR. Just there need to be captions. <laughs> just do RG, IR. Just do R two D two noises and you'll be fine. You'll be like. Well, people, pop, pop, people, pop, 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 yeah. <laughs> that makes it real. Then it makes. It, then you get it. Yeah. <laughs> now you understand why it was infrared. a male-dominated industry for so long. Because no, no um, woman would ever want to talk about this shit. Nothing exciting. Hey, but this is the <laughs> she part has the, better things to this do. This is the part we're in the shop and get, you know building the next robot, right? So, yeah. No, no crazy. It's, it's not. How, we don't. How many? Don't so, it anyway, it's just that we don't understand because you're just smarter than us about this stuff. Oh uh, yeah. uh, no. no. Hey, hey, hey. This is serious. This is some serious like technical understanding of how to replicate one of the great mysteries of the natural world. I mean, this is not a minor We don't know. Take. We don't know all he's of it. Like a he's candle. only creating we'll sunlight. Never. No big deal. No, no. Yeah, no he's big making big fire big. in, you know, yeah. the sun. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. We only have four more days left. And he has controls. Jen's in a good mood. He's smoking flour. That's rare. <laughs> not really? Yeah. It's sour, though. It's sour. sour. The rosin's over it's there. It's that rare mm. sour. Yeah, it's <laughs> bad. God damn. All right, so we're going to get you guys set up. And uh, you heard Jin say he's in for three tickets at 1200 bucks a piece. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hold on. We guys, they're doing an event. I heard about the bagel problems wow. earlier, right? You guys were talking about bagels? Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, East Coast got good bagels. you got to be careful with East Coast bagels. Where's Vinny? I can't make bagels right? and bring them here because he has. He gets all upset. That's why I don't want to make bagel. I'll have to oh, my God. Shh. Bagel phobia. Wait, on the IR question, um, do you, you want to? Should we take that offline? Sounds like. No, it's okay. It's if you too can technical. Do it with, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, like the delegate from the science world is trying to say. Look, she's touching up here. She's going. Eh. There was an end cap. There was a company. To, to fill, there was a company. To fill it in as Dave would want to for the lay people, it's it's just leaf surface temperature kind of dictates what BPD actually is. It's a sliding scale based Absolutely. on exactly 100%. temperature humidity with what the leaf surface temperature is. So exactly. you really. To calculate it correctly, you need an infrared scan or some sort of leaf surface monitoring along with temperature and humidity to really get accurate BPD. There was a light, that, co there was a light and, company out of Holland right when I left around 2010 that was doing that. And they had yeah. a camera set. It was a gold, gold yeah. ballast. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yes. And they had a camera. And I, yeah. I remember when the guy came to me, I was just like, this is crazy crazy high level yeah. shit and he was like dude it'll it'll he wasn't explaining it to me as leaf temperature what he was explaining it to me was like he said it'll monitor when your leaf even just changes the tiniest bit it'll oh, leave wow. adjust, you know what i mean don't know but it was yeah. basically leaf temperature in the end because that's what yeah for sure right so if you look at the canopy um many many levels of temperature many many leaves so that's why there's so many different sizes of bud as you get down right so everything is different the microclimate so that's exactly what i was talking about since you know, IR sensors are quite expensive. You don't want a million of them on a million dots, right? It's because they points and then maybe it sweeps. Maybe one per room, right? Let's do one per room, easy. That's done. Consider it done. We can easily integrate that. You just there you go. You just you know, created a product. Yeah, you created an right. application, right? <laughs> you will get but, zero dollars. Well, so but, I have but, but back to, back to overall management, right? So if you're looking at the physical space, of, <laughs> let's just go to like physical space zero with the dollars. 2D, 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss this once in a lifetime opportunity. So, and, and yeah, let's definitely take it offline then. Because yeah. I have worked with others that integrate it into their fixture. Um, and, and again, I, I do help of an advisory board that works on plant vision tech that is wanting to get into fixtures. There it is. So maybe yeah. we all talk. Yes. Let's, you bring it in. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. You but got it. As long as that, right? But physically, I feel like even there's no hot spots, right? And we're just taking the risk off on a physical space maximize the bud sizes and quality and ma without that temperature you know influence from other light sources led <coughs> gives you a wow. better management of that yield right oh, so coming back to the, the triple double stuff we can also always talk triple about double the, you, know, you just said mark's favorite thing right there triple basketball double. <laughs> mark made a uh, oh, yeah. made Jokic say he was the highest yeah, that's pretty good. Right? Yeah, you did great. Can on I that. give Thank a you. shout out to Sour Family Farms? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Roz and Dogs. What did he do for you? No, I have hell no. Who's yeah, you wait. You just thought you <laughs> wait. You thought. Keith hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Back up. Back up. Back up. It's not sour. That's. It's a, All right. Shout not, out to Keith. Lance. Yes. Sour Family Keith Genetics. 
Dude, see. okay, my bad. Yeah. 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 You just gave a shout out to Rosendahl. Shout dogs. out to Logan. I like uh, Wait, can I, can I give some shout Yeah, but he's growing AJ Sour, so it's like. Uh, uh, AJ Schwager. <laughs> Wait, is the real sour right here, boy? Was there, That's is Manny's there... cut. That's Manny's cut, basically. Oh. Right this is Fuego. Fuego. Like Talk about memory lane. Thank you. Boom. So I guess we have to Thank let's you. sell some more gins lights right now. Do right into go right into Sunscape LED. You can hang out with us if you want and just do all our ads and then you'll have all these cool people to contact. You'll be like, oh, oh yeah. Okay. You'll know who to carry in your dispensary. We, you can get Dab X. You want guys want to carry get your pen Dab out. X. Get your pan out, Cassandra. Come on. Hash Ben. Pen. No, I thought, wait, didn't I say he was dead Ben because he was wearing the dead yeah, shirt? but he's still Hash Ben. He, he doesn't take away from his Hash Ben. Oh, he's dead. Hemp Ben. Hemp oh, Ben. Dead no, Hash Ben. No, no. Yeah, well, he's Hemp Ben. Hemp Ben, okay. Hemp Ben. Hemp Ben. No, 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 no. So you got to start carrying Dab X at your... Okay. You know, we would love Thank for you, you to do that. Don't look into that. This is a great product, Terp Wipes. Just look at them right We're Just look at everything on our thing yeah, here. No. 14. No, you can't carry that. Can't carry that. Um, yo tips. can't carry that. Yo tips. You can can't carry yo tips. Do you guys sell pre rolls? Of course they do. And yeah. flour, right? So we'll, we'll do yo tips. See, we all have our own individual. I don't know stuff. if you noticed when we were sharing a joint all night. Everybody had their own individual yotip.com. Yo we don't spread herpes around here. <laughs> we don't spread wook no food, herp. conference no herp, cough. Wook. No, no, no wooks. No wook cough. No, no wook herp. cough. No COVID. No hippie lip. No hippie no lip. COVID. Yeah, no hippie lip. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> keeps what they have together. It's it's kind of like keep the your own. Keep it to yourself. It, you it's it's like That's putting. Feel but it actually right? makes your shit hit better too. It's, yeah. I like, yeah. like it tastes. It's like one of those things where you're like, fuck. It just actually makes. Like if you have pre, a lot of pre rolls or roll too tight, and they just you're like, what the fuck? You put this thing in, it gives a little air <laughs> gap. Makes it well, you're not deep. handling the crutch and getting it all wet and squeezing it, and so that it, you only get halfway through it before it clogs. And plus, Dave's already handled that joint for like ten minutes at least. <laughs> yeah, by the time he's rolled it, he's already even get he's it. just rolled and rolled and rolled, and you're like, dude. And then he does he does that old man thing it's where all you, greasy. you put it in your mouth and you lick it and <laughs> he does right in and right 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 a couple mouth. times, a couple times in and out. <laughs> he does that one. I love it. When <laughs> I love it when your friend rolls a blunt and just licks the shit out of it. No, like, I remember that when I was a kid, though, especially like, all those. Old do I really want to smoke this? I'd take the whole <laughs> joint and wow! <laughs> like, oh, it's like you, you just got sexual with that blunt. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna smoke that? No thanks. So you yeah. go to yotip.com and you can order and click on their buy on Amazon page, or you can go to Yo Products LLC on Instagram. Um, we we use them. They it, we have the Ooh, Yotip shit. XL. So that's a blunt one right there. Yes, that's and the you know what this fits. Fatty. This fits the oh. two and a half gram hash hole perfectly. Not XL, just say blunt on it. East Coast moves blunt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, East Coast shit. guys, go on. Yeah. So um, gr- it's a great it. product, and when when they're in the cash flow positive mode, you'll be seeing donations to the spinal cord injury community. Um, I, I don't know. Most of you don't know that only sixteen percent of some you know, of people who have spinal cord injuries live above the poverty line. So the company is doing great things. They really want to contribute back to the community and they make a great product. It's kept me safe all the way through MJ Bizcon, Cowboy Cup, Vegas, and ever Spanibus. So he, he didn't use a Yotip, got sick. Uh. I did. I didn't get sick. So Yotip.com. That sounds it's like a weed consumption. Well, and we have to get you some samples so that you can. Uh, it, it's a great five dollar upsell when somebody is leaving with pre rolls or flour, and it's not just for when you're sharing. It's like putting a garden hose handle on a garden hose. It makes it hit better. Even if you don't like it like that, I just roll mine into the joint garden because hose. I'm usually smoking by myself. I just roll it straight into the joint, and it. It's awesome. And, and they have a new product coming out that is designed for myself, pre-roll companies that want to roll it straight into a joint. You fucking heathen. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's... Be- yeah. You, you Neanderthal. Do that. Who's next? Because <laughs> well, we're way out I, I of order. I just didn't know if we were going to be... Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's go back to where we're at. So High Cafe. Oh, shit. Give a shout out to Vinny and uh, Viper Pit Barbecue. And uh, he's a... Uh, so Sling. those of you who know me know I don't give compliments to Vinny easily, but uh, just a regular person walked in off the street, 
sat down, started eating his wings, and said out loud, these are the best fucking wings I've ever had in my entire life. No, I shit you not. I, I asked him, I said, can I put you on camera? Because nobody's going to believe me if I say that. Yeah. So it, it really, he really does, he, he's figured out how to do barbecue really well. Um, his brisket is like what grandma made. Back in New York, so come oh, try wow. some. Hey. Yeah. Nice. Now, me. Hey. Oh my Ooh, God. Brisket. I said I give him five That's Jewish the stars up. Right there. Wow. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he's got burn ends, uh, brisket, ribs, smoked. Uh, wings and all that. He did that. all this because he knows that, he cheese. knows I don't, don't eat meat. So that's just what he lots of drinks. If you got some vinyl, bring it down. You can play it. You can DJ it. You can just play some this songs. You, you have can to call the local. Down. Down. You should call local. This is if you have a yeah. podcast, you can do a podcast down here at So High as well. So yeah. hit, hit up any of uh, So High. See what else? Is, what is uh, on the menu? Forty three hundred West Alameda. Mm -hmm. Ozocoffee.com. I was with Justin today, and I didn't give him enough props. All the flour we smoked today, with the exception of our Adam Sour Diesel, um, was given to us from cuts that Adam gave Justin that he grew out this year. And he, uh, it does not surprise me how well he grows cannabis knowing mm. the coffee that he roasts, because this is fire. That sticky lemon... Uh, rocked my head Outdoor. and the the freak show number one he has several versions of it but this is the one he gave us on point justin yeah that joint was tasty yeah ozocoffee.com you enter done deal 24 in the promo field at checkout and you get 20 percent off your order i highly suggest you just get the subscription because he is changing his varietals so often it's the best way to sample everything they're they're roasting ozocoffee.com done deal 24 build a soil 855-877 soil while you can go to build the soil.com's website and learn oh, about all Dominion the products call there. them look at that oh yeah do Shout out to Duke, shout out to Miles, shout out to everybody who wants to know anything about growing anything, you can give him a call. Um, he employs just the most knowledgeable staff. They'll answer your questions from mushrooms to vegetables to cannabis. Um, just tell them you heard about it on the show. You can't enter it on their website because the last time we had that done, we broke his whole fucking thing for broke a it. year. Broke the system. They gave everybody the done deal. <laughs> and we, we didn't get any marketing data because yeah. everybody had it. So like, it meant he, like we built his whole business. And yeah, we, that we did it all. <laughs> we did it all. Yeah. <laughs> Buildasoil.com. <clears throat> Yo tip, hell yeah. Yep. Greenfarmsmed.com. So do not, do not look at that piddly joint right there because his dispensary is a hundred times better than that joint. That stock photo. That's a mid tail carried, joint. No, no that's a mid tail <laughs> joint. He carries over 700 SKUs. If you want to get as confused as going to a New York City Chinese restaurant, you go to Green Farms Med, but they have everything, okay? E every product that is made in Colorado, pretty much, he has on the shelves from every edible product, from every vapor cartridge, from all the different concentrate manufacturers. You got to be a medical patient. You ask for the done deal. It's going to be a minimum of 10% off. But if JW's there and you're really nice to them, they'll probably do you solid. So greenfarmsmed.com. Green Bros. The number one company for post-harvest and joint rolling machinery made in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, you go to greenbroswithaz.com and then you give them a call. Tell them you heard about it on the show. They're big ticket items. You're going to get 5% off everything. Or you can get their harvest trim bucket, which is the equivalent of like inviting six friends over. Um, you get 10% off the bucket. So greenbroswithaz.com. Oh, I know all about that. What I do know all about is Apothecary Farms. <laughs> uh, Wait, hold on a sec. Before you start it, Chin, will you be an objective observer? Yeah. Don't look. Okay. Can you tell if Mark is reading or doing the same ad that he's done for five <laughs> years by memory? Okay. okay. Well, really, don't look. Go I was ahead. actually going to shake it up this week. So, anyways, but uh, if you're into concentrates, uh, see, you messed me all up, dude. <laughs> what the fuck, man? You messed up my flow. It didn't take much. <laughs> yeah, dude. Jesus. What the hell, man? All right. What? Five yeah, years? Apothecary what? Farms, <laughs> Denver, and Oklahoma's concentrate focused dispensary. If you're ready for 420, so are they. 
I heard uh, at the week of 420 they're going to start doing the deals, and uh, I think we can pretty much expect max out Monday deals for 420 max all, all out week. Monday. You know what I mean? So, Monday, Monday, uh, Monday. yeah, if you don't know about max out Monday, you can go to any of the apothecary farms uh, uh, locations on Monday and max out for max out. cheaper than the rest of the week. All eight grams for 120 bucks. Yeah. Apothecary yeah. Farms crazy, in Denver and in Oklahoma. And if you're in Boulder, you can buy apothecary extracts at Hash House. It was $38 for eight grams. Wow. I could not believe it. 38 bucks for eight grams. So, no. Um, yes. Yep. Wait, what? No. <laughs> yes. Oh, wait, wait, Luca, like, how Dave does the, like, the, the ad for the Debex. <laughs> um, let's see if I am reading. Hold on. It is dabbing has never been easier. Buy now. More info. Go. Uh, nice. Okay. It, it, you, we, we've we've done this ad already. It's yeah. and, and really all all the products that we talk about we believe in and we use, which is why it's so easy to talk about them because we use them on a daily basis. This is my favorite electronic dab rig out there right now yes i i didn't say a word when mateo took his cult co out and you know took dabs out of it all right I dab I, x took a shit yeah as soon well as because I, you probably so dropped I, it or I something i had to use the piece of shit puff co. Why, why didn't you just write to their customer service team and they would fix it oh i was gonna write to you right but. this is the guy you this he's your latex salesman he's your latex salesman <laughs> Yeah, he, oh. I, let's try I hope Dabx, job. Dabx.com. As soon as I get my glass, I'm going to be putting a little 14er boulder in it. There you oh, go. There we go. That hash hole is fantastic. The yeah. rosin is on point. Right now, they have a couple of grams for $17. Wait. 17 bucks a gram for rosin. This is where your son works, right? This is where my son is. He's yeah, one of the cultivation like managers at 14er. Um, they've right. been preaching for years. Terps over that mythical THC number ha having anything to do with potency. They think quality, 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 consistency, and they make some amazing rosin, amazing flour, and they use apothecary extracts for their BHO. So you go to 14erboulder.com. If you enter done deal at checkout right now, I think it's 20% off. So you want to take advantage of that. Place a pre-order. Selling of latex and latex related products <laughs> kawaiihempco.com we're going we were supposed to have Judd on tonight but we had a packed show so we'll, we're going to have him on next week kawaiihempco.com takingtopscannabis.com he was supposed to be here tonight which was interesting he said he was coming down mm. so hopefully we'll see him before right. patreon is over check it out takingtopscannabis.com Oh shit! Yeah. Where is he? What what was oh, that? Where is he? What saw... was that thing that was here earlier? Was so like, that's this. That so right this is a stunned. We'll do it on Patreon. Oh yeah, Patreon. Oh, yeah. Tender glass. So this product is just beyond where it. It's just. I want that little fucking rip. It <laughs> makes you higher than higher. The hash what attachment is intense. Like. Yeah. So. Oh, that's a different one. <laughs> that's a different one. That's yeah. That's just like a What's regular that guy, dog blanket. What's he doing there? He's walking through the grocery store with this <laughs> attachment that he made. It looks yeah. so much like Tops. That was so cool it that does. they made it. It might as well be Tops, right? He's yeah. Big time. No, it's He's Tops 20 years from now. So you go to stundenglass.com, you enter done deal at checkout, and you get 24% off yes. the double-ended gravity bomb. Yeah. Double gravity bomb. Gravity yeah. bomb. That's yes. a gravity bomb. Yes. It's what was right here we took out We're of the way about, because you I couldn't know. see the, your sh your smiley face on the you're screen. You're about to rip it. Well, look at that, Jen. Yeah. yeah. He's amazing. No, you're going to rip it. You're going to hit it. Yeah, we'll rip it In later. fact, it's important it's that you of, take it six part of being on the show. Yeah, if you don't do it, then... Yeah, then you suck. Yeah, you lost the video. We edit that part of the video. And you get a big L. Six yeah. times. Yeah. We, 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 big, we big replace L. you with Heliospectra. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You know, what, you know, you know what I saw online, which is crazy, is there's some, there's some place. <laughs> that was below the belt. <laughs> that was low. <laughs> low. Hortatech hey, direct. No, well, yeah. I, saw on Facebook, Hortatech. I saw on Facebook they were selling. Somebody was had for $29, they had it with the name and everything. Stunden, what? Stunden Glass. 
They were totally ripping people off. Oh, yeah. Oh. It was like $29. It was China. Oh, sure. Fucking no, it said Jin's cousin. It said Jin's glass the whole night. Yeah, you, if you cannot get anything, they sell for 29 bucks. I'm just yeah, telling you. The, the rig they, they sent, like sent us. They worth of 300 They're nice. But, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, uh, Cassandra, the rig they sent us. <laughs> the Grateful Dead one bucks. is epic. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like epic. you're at a concert. If you the, paid $29, you got Stucky Glass. The Steal Your Face, <clears throat> Grateful Dead, yes. double-ended gravity double bong that, that they sent he us said it. He said with it. the the um, concentrate attachment, definitely I think it's 1200 bucks. Do you yeah. have a carrying case for it so you can bring it to Dabadoo? Um, no, but I, you know what? I Why don't we just connect you with them and they'll send one to you at Dabadoo gonna so that we don't have to like, travel with one. They're going to go, of course we're gonna Mila? How can I? I miss how can the beginning I get of the show. When's their event? What's the date? Uh, well, hold on. There's only 20 tickets, and Mateo, I don't think you can afford one, buddy. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know. Can I answer that? <laughs> yeah. or what? Oh, it's it's hash. Oh. Just relax. Portedtechdirect.com. So they make the best. They make the best double walled greenhouses. All the mechanical are on the interior greenhouse. We spoke to a grower who was in North Dakota. It was minus 70 degrees outside for three days with 50 mile an hour winds, and they kept it a constant 72 inside. So hortatechdirect.com. You give them a call. You tell them you heard about it on the Adam Dunn Show. You're going to get 5% off the big ticket item, and you get six free trim brushes yeah those the greenhouse trim- has to be yeah. over 30 grand though you can't be buying the 10 grand now. those trim brushes are amazing and expect the six brushes yeah they we definitely can, work the right hortatechdirect.com terpwipes.com slash done deal it's the only way you can get these we'd love to connect you with terp wipes cassandra great. um the, the, it's just a must have for any dabber or anybody who has to sit next to somebody like adam for multiple hours during the course of an evening when, when you it, walk away it's, it's just mess. gross okay you can clean up all of adam's messes <laughs> with a turp wipe <laughs> no it saved us at hotels man right? checking out i'd be like oh man if Hold I didn't on. Have a turp wipe, mark be cleans so his records with them very <laughs> <laughs> Very controversially, yeah. yes. Does it make it all cloudy though? Mark's no. gonna do no. an infomercial no. No. for them. No. Sometimes it makes it for the vinyl oh, industry. He no. saves no. records that are. I gonna think be it's thrown. better than pooling liquid onto it, but it's I only do it for the really grimy stuff. I don't like do like every record with it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sure enough. Like yeah. Take that money. Bo- like booty house, like grimy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Terpwipes.com <laughs> slash done deal. Booty house, yes. Exactly. Bio 365. So yeah, Tim, shout out to Bio. Tim at Bio 365.com is, is doing some. He's a rock star. He's trying yeah, to rock star he's shit. Mateo at the moment. So, yeah, we were just testing. They'll send you a pallet. They'll send you a pallet. I showed him a picture of my balls. You need a pallet? Oh, go. he again. He's your I'm latex like, salesman. I might have I'm just, a you know, coming. anyway, you'll get a pallet if you can use a pallet. He's not going to send you what you're not going to use, but he's going to make a soil mixture of what you're using right now to show that they just do it better. So you go to bio365.com, you give Tim a call or Tim at bio365.com. Um, and if you're a deadhead, you got to be supporting this company because it is a deadhead owned business. No, I'm not. Numnutsco.com. You betcha. You enter done deal at checkout, you get 20% off all of his CBD peanut butter. Um, If you're a medical patient in Colorado, you click the blue link up top that says find our nuts, and you can find the thousand milligram. (laughs) Thousand milligram. Or his chest. Most likely be on Dave's chest. Chestnuts. Or, you know, it could be your backside. Oh, yeah, it could be your backside. Those back nuts. Anyway, numbnutsco.com. I like that. If he's at Target picking out curtains, I'm like, the cinnamon almond butter, even though almonds are just a horrible nut to eat because they take so much water to bring to harvest. While he's nutting. And if you're in Breckenridge, (laughs) you go to BreckenridgeOrganicTherapy.com. You enter done deal at checkout. You tell everybody while you're waiting online, you'll get 10% off your order. Yeah, guy. You're allowed. They want you to do it. Hey, yo, yeah, discount. Are we going to wait for the end for... Or are we oh, going to yeah, go yeah. for Save it? the best yeah, for no. last. Yeah, Save, Save the best for last. Save the best for last. Yeah. Oh, AdamDunnShow.com? No, that is Jerome Baker.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, we're Imagine. already getting yeah. ripped off. The maker there'll of the be, Vindicator. There'll <laughs> be nitrous-infused bongs made by uh, all the the cheap glass blowers real oh. soon. Yeah, chi- China. Like, oh, yeah. nitrous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> you, know, you should punch him in the head right now. <laughs> I will later. That, <laughs> that is just... What the fuck? I will later. What the fuck? Sucking down, sucking down, <laughs> sucking down nitrous. I, I see where Mateo down. learns his geography from. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my God! What the fuck? Anyway, what so uh, uh, <laughs> that was the, the that was like some South Park racist shit right there, man. Yeah, and they're allowed to do it. <coughs> oh. We are too. I'm yeah. feeling oh. suited. Yes. Get the Tommy Chong collection bongs. Go to Jerome Baker Glass look on in your, Instagram. Look in your attic. You might even have one of these. You might, bad boys. Because that's yeah, the thing. It's a pleasure to have People you. People are pulling on. them out now from like. Thank you. Guys. Love the- <laughs> Department. Do you want to carry some Jerome Baker glass at your place? We'll we'll hook you guys up. Hey, we'll hook you up. Yeah. We know a guy. We know a guy who knows a guy. Who knows the guy? Yeah. Jerome Who's Baker. probably com. seen him naked. Seedsherenow.com. April oh my God. has arrived and we're kicking off the month well, with tons good. of incredible deals on cannabis seeds. Every order secures a freebie distribution choice, plus enjoy 20% off all compound genetic packs and cookie flavor strains throughout April. Stay tuned for our weekly sales all month long. Seeds here now, the gold standard of genetics. Wow, that's fucking wow. professional. Dude. That was empowering. If you need to Thank read, you. like, if you need stuff. voiceovers in the industry, Mark is char- only charges five bucks an hour. That's good. That's he'll, do, he'll do anything you, you need. Find him on Fiverr. <laughs> and Cameo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll read some shit on Fiverr. SeedsHereNow.com. Uh, AdamDunshow.com. Show it. merch. Yeah. Heard if about you, it. If uh, you like uh, the motherfucking Adam Dunshow shirt, that's on here. And we merch. got some TH, some There's classic. Some stuff. Come get on, the, get the flag fresh shirt that's because freshhemp.com if you want to pick up the jackets. Oh, freshhemp.com. Fresh no, fresh hemp, sorry. Dot .eu. Doggy dot lab. Yeah, dot okay. Get get the flag shirt so that people think you're like a blue liner and then nobody in Boulder wants to talk to oh, you. Yeah, it's the greatest will, thing in the world. Keep people away from you. Yep. Just they all they go to the other side of the street. No one will talk to you. Yep. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> AdamDunshow.com. Yeah, the pirate girl's awesome. No yeah, discount. Those are, those are, those are, uh, no done deal. SunscapedLED.com. It's not Sunscaped LED. It's oh. Sunscape. It can be LED. No, no, no. I just read the, I know the thing did. wrong right there. Is what you're Sunscape LED. Yeah. It's your manscaper. <laughs> when yeah. you're thinking of how you when you can't wait, right. yeah. can't wait to get home and it's, get it. It's true. Did, Cassandra, did you want to carry Manscape? I'm going to start packing up right now oh, actually. <laughs> it's right up my alley they carry sunscape too. Hey, wait let mark do it like go ahead that. mark your alley like sunscape that. led.com Re- redefining the future of led lighting <laughs> there we go now we're talking hey did you That's hear a good one mark you're hired mark, hey, five mark did you hear Jen, let's hear your version yeah five dollars I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for those of you listening for the first time or the last time, anytime Mark actually says <laughs> just Timo? kidding, he, he's not kidding at all. <laughs> really, that means he touched a nerve. Yeah, he's pissed. <laughs> he's really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he was complaining before the show that he really hasn't been able to do anything on a Friday night for like the past six years. <laughs> I'm sucking down, I'm sucking down nitrous. And there's a game. And there's a game. So there's a game tonight? No, tomorrow night. No. Oh. You're fine. You're good. I'm I'm all in right now. <laughs> this is all in. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh, you and Mateo should go sell Anyways. latex. We're gonna work on getting some better videos to put up. Of okay. Like, so you know what though? Like it doesn't the, matter I like, about I like the, the videos. Spray in the thing. That's, that's yeah. a good one. That's I was it. gonna that's say, like, when's our new website going to be back up? <laughs> well, talk to AI Nick over there. Right. He'll get one. Yeah, Nick's for you. working. At, we Nick, we hired. Nick. Build us a website. We need a website. Hey, ten sure. minutes. You we got hired, ten I'm minutes. We hired your whole tech team. We hired Nick. These three are three badasses. Okay. Oh no no no. The whole tech team. I'm gonna. Just Nick. No, <laughs> yeah, no, you, you don't want to hire him. Uh, yeah, we don't. <laughs> Mark does not need another job. <laughs> He's no. only got nine jobs. <laughs> so Sunscape LED, That's he'll, the he'll be wearing a fanny pack. Yes. Yeah. Do you have to have the fanny pack on in the video? Yeah, well, Someone no, in the it. chat was asking if you've done before and after, um, what was it, frequency on the lights after you've power washed them like that? <laughs> they were just curious. <laughs> Yeah. You didn't think he was yeah, going to go there with the before and after? Nah. You thought he was going right. somewhere else yeah. with that? Oh, Have yes. you measured the spectrum before and after? That's what they asked. <laughs> yes. Anyways. Yes, we will do it. Oh, nice. Sweet. 
Yeah, the next video we'll make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> nice, Jin. Yeah, you looked a little nervous when he you, he asked you, you that like, question. Hey. Were you like going to say like, was this when you were number twelve on Pornhub or something well, like I mean, that? You, you didn't just know. Relax, bro. Porn? What? Oh, what? Just yeah. checking. Fuck. Hey, hey, where where you going? Going? Because he looked all... Anyway. To be honest with you, that smells like... Sunscape LED. If you... You're not going to enter done deal anywhere. What you're going to do is you're going to give them a call. Yeah. And they're going to figure out what you need. And they're going to sell you exactly what you need. Give you a With the right controllers. And Mateo... And Mateo's going to come and forget the box. <laughs> and then he's going to come back. The right box. You know what? Hey, <laughs> hold on. I'm working on it. Jin, he says we just Jin, wants to need a car to get to you. Jin showed me how to use a calendar today. Oh, yeah. so funny, I oh wow. Finally yeah. learning. He's I'm finally learning. learning. It's got a baby steps. That's, That's your latex salesman. <laughs> Hey, he's killing it. On, sure. late, late, on, on Kimmel saying? last night, Did nobody not could watch address an envelope. <laughs> I, we, we, we value emotional intelligence more. I, <laughs> I love the guy. <laughs> I, I remember when we were, where we were in New York, right? Where he took all of Adam's weed. It was Vegas. It was Vegas. It was Vegas. He took all of Adam's weed and I'm... he rolled it into three of the most <laughs> horrible looking joints. In fact, you might not have you know recognized the root them of as joints. You guys motivated. We're, I think we're getting to the root of this really little good competition. Right it was yeah. like it was like if a if you told a three year old to draw <laughs> to draw like Elon Musk's rocket, it was like that's how he built it. It, w- had, it had like fifteen filters at the bottom. And they were like, and, and it yeah. Was all like, what is at one point, CC was talking shit about it and I was like wow this is really bad if CeCe's making CeCe's fun of talking your joints, shit, I really fucked they up. They were super Dr. Seussy looking. But they motivated it. me and the next time I come on the show I'm gonna fucking roll the fattest doinker and it's gonna be professional. <laughs> it's gonna be on Patreon. Hi, I'm Nikola Jokic and I'm the highest Hi, <laughs> I'm Nikola Jokic, and I'm the Did highest. that go viral, Mark? Hi, no. I'm Nikola Jokic, and I'm... It didn't. That was your no. That was your attempt at editing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you like that? No. There you What's up? I'm, I'm it was glad. worse before. I'm glad you don't edit the show. But yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks. For I know. I edited that video, and you didn't post it or anything. That was lame. I know. Oh, well. It got past this point. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't want to embarrass him. Nah. It was too embarrassing. Thank you guys for putting up with us for this long. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who are you thanking? We kind of get... <laughs> oh, our friend. Oh, our Cassandra? Guests, the guests. Virginia. They're the greatest. They laugh yeah, at I shit. Too. Yeah, this yeah. is... It was their own personal show. We're kind of all over the place. Can we clarify oh, which Ben is which again? It's Deadhead Ben over there hash. and who's Hash Ben. He is Hash Ben. And then it's Hemp hash Ben over <laughs> there who knows a fuck ton about <laughs> electronics and, and, and lighting. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. Was, talk about lights. And Cassandra is just surprised that she made it three hours with us. And, <laughs> and knowing and, and now when we tell her she could have left at any time after oh, we yeah. took what? gin on. I and have to be here. <laughs> what the? No. But thank you for sticking <laughs> it out with us. Thank you for that, sticking no, it out. No, she with us. understands quantum physics now. So I know, she's stick around for Patreon. She took in a lot. Yes. We're good. And you'll see the gravity bong <laughs> in use. Jin is right. going to actually take the gravity bong through his nose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Six times. Ooh. I'm going to boo Six mine. times. <laughs> Good yeah. luck, Jen. Oh, oh. Yeah, you after <laughs> it. Oh. Sounds like a <laughs> Oh, we just lost all three of our Patreon subscribers. <laughs> there he goes. Oh. <laughs> they just canceled their memberships. Now, well, thank you guys. Thank uh, you so much. We'll see you in a few months. And uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, What's the date? Hold on, you guys. The 18th. May 18th. And, the 18th. and oh. we told you they're t- the tickets are way too expensive uh, for you. May. May. Well, my birthday's June 1st, so technically I get in for Everybody's free. birthday's in June. <laughs> Two weeks ahead, you get in for free? <laughs> is, I don't know. It, it sounded good. No. Yeah, May. Is May it a hash competition, is, is right? Judgment Day. Oh, you, you, listen. June 19th Hold on. is the awards. Johnny Come Lately Mateo, relax. Go watch the first half of the show. Watch the first half of the show. Stop playing dumb. I do that for all of us. If it's... If it's a hash competition that I can enter some hash in. Yeah, can we enter? No, um, you don't have a license from... in Massachusetts or on the East Coast. License. You don't need a license? Uh, you submit. don't even need a license, don't license. license. <laughs> now, nope. we're ta- now we're talking. This is a okay. private connoisseur event. Oh, you know, it's not a... Private. I'm bringing it. Uh, it's not a Sunscape private LED party. is going to bring it. We're going to win. <laughs> well, uh-oh. That's okay, well, then you got to buy three tickets at $1,200 each. And no problem. Damn, how much did you just mark my ticket at? Wow. Not, just, no, that's for Adam and I. 
Oh, a few Lordy. percent, you yeah. know. This is fucking twenty yeah. percent, Dave. Over about ninety-eight here. percent. Twenty-five percent, Dave. Give me a fucking break. I'm worth every penny. But uh, no but Hemp pay. Ben, don't release oh, spicy. Don't release uh, the tickets yet. We should put our heads together because this could be a lot of fun. Yeah, we and we don't have to overcharge for, for sure. them. And we can just get some playoff. Don't, don't give media. any to Dave. Give them all. I don't need and, one. And Adam, I'm a please, judge. Feel free. Share my contacts yeah. in the tail, please. Okay. Oh man, yeah. if you're a judge, I'm gonna lose. Yeah. No, because I won't know what sample is yours. You are the judge. Oh, never mind. Okay. Can't there we go. It. You guys can't enter. They, they're not. This they, is a prestigious event. They don't allow that. Yeah, <laughs> we discussed this. Right. We blew it. Yeah, can't we blew do our it. scam. It's a, that was our scam. Is... I was going to win the whole thing. Yep. The queen. Oh, man. Yeah. All figured out. Yeah. That was it. Blew it. We fucked it up for it. Right. Right, well, for those of you out there, join Patreon. Go to. Right. I, I don't know how you do it, but. You, you guys, uh, the link that you're on, if you want to hang out with us, you can come back on the Patreon in 10 minutes. Yeah. So, 10 minutes. We'll be here. Thank you. Thank you. Talking to you. Thanks, Ben. And ben. Appreciate Thanks your times. Dabba Dabba Yabba Dabba Doo yeah. in uh, Dabba Massachusetts. Dabba Go to yeah. Dabba Doo yeah. Events. Yabba. Go to sunscapeled.com. Sunscapeled on Instagram. Dabba Doo Chits. What? Dabba Doo Chits. There you go. You got a new, uh, new pun. Uh, new pun. Uh, no. Got a new pun. Sweetgrass Botanicals <laughs> in Lee, Massachusetts. There you go. Sweetgrass. And we'll. Dabba yeah, and, and I so like I Dabba figure Dabba. if it's Saturday, we do the show on Friday. We're probably going to be in town on the Friday. We should do the show from your... Of course we're going to do the show from there. What are you thinking? Yeah, so... Yeah, um, we're going to do the show on Saturday. What do you do? No, about we do that? the show on Friday. We do it Friday. Don't worry. We got to do it Friday. got to be live. Yeah, got to gotta be, be live. live. We can't adjust. So May 17th, Friday from Massachusetts. For all of you East Coasters, you know where we'll be. You should come down and hang out. That'll be the family night when we're setting, you know, kicking out the legs on the folding tables and all that stuff. Hope you there guys like go. setting up. We and do. you can broadcast live when we <laughs> Dave's really Does good. that involve work? When it comes to like manual labor, this guy I is promise I'll feed you. I've got one picture. I of him set up some chairs in Tulsa. Once. Hmm. Oh, he set up some chairs. Yeah, I don't know about that. I set some chairs up in Tulsa. I believe you. Yeah, I highly <laughs> doubt We'll that. set you guys up with a nice cabin vibe for the uh, show that Friday. Thank you. I'll make sure you got a good setting. All, I can't, all we need is good internet. I'll send you Adam's rider. Good uh, uh, easy does it. You don't have to blow up like 20 balloons each or something, you know. There'll be oh, some sort of, you know, I'll think of something. Not too many. That's what Patreon is. I'm sucking down nights. Oh, uh, yeah, he'll be sucking 20 balloons, but not blowing them up. <laughs> Fuck not using balloons going in that direction, are we? Yeah. Thank you, Ben and Cassandra. And uh, yes. we'll see you guys in 10 minutes. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. See you. Peace out. Peace. Sweet. Some call it sunset. Some call it sunset. Some people call it.